words and posturing. The medical personnel shut it down. Nobody was happy. That has added fuel to this rivalry that dates back to the early 90s. ACC Atlantic Division rivals. Seminoles dominated in the 90s. Clemson, Mark, has won five straight in this series. Seminoles Q looking for a little bounce back at just the right time here. Florida State won the toss, deferring to the second half. Clemson will receive. Will Shipley standing at his own goal line, ready for this kick. And he'll watch it dribble just out of bounds at about the one yard line. It'll be first and 10 for Clemson as we take a look at Robert's keys to the game. Robert? Yes, both of these teams have to stop the quarterback run. Syracuse and North Carolina ran for 100 yards against FSU, and Clemson has to bottle up Jordan Travis if they want a chance to win today. Two chains, right? We talk about these defenses need to make these run-based offenses play behind the chains today because that's not what they're built to do. And then we got DJ Cinco on the turntables. DJ has to play free today. Stop trying to be perfect and pick the perfect song. Just have fun, man. Let the game come to you, and you give your, chance, your team a chance to win. Uwe Anglale is the surname, but he goes by Big Cinco. See how big he comes up this afternoon. First and 10 from the 35 after the penalty. Shipley rocked back at the 30-yard line immediately by Amari Gaynor. That's going to be a loss of about four or five on the play. A good initial play for that Seminole defense that's become a lot more stout. Dabo Swinney in his 13th season as head coach here at Clemson, former assistant coach here, trying to get this team back on the right track. They're going to run it. Shipley again between the tackles. Got a couple of yards to get it back. It'll be still third and long. Gainer with his second consecutive stop. Mike Norvell's squad never panicked when they started 0-4. They're now 3-4. And Coach Norvell continuing to invest in the culture that he's building and beginning to get some of those dividends now. His quarterback has been a big help. Third and long for the Tigers. They set up a screen to Shipley. Got some room. Shipley made a nice move but brought down in the open field. A nice tackle by Akeem Dent. It'll be fourth and about three. Improved secondary play has been key for Seminoles, too. Yes, it has. And I like the play call here with the screen. But if you're Will Shipley, you're one on one with a man in the open field. You have to make him miss. But as we talked about, Florida State has seemed to find their identity and they're playing at, at a much higher level than they were early in the year. And Akeem Dent right there, that's what you want out of your safety. Break down, make the tackle, stop him from getting the first down. Now your offense, who's been electrifying lately, can get the ball back and go to work. And that was textbook tackling. Ward. We'll watch it bounce in front of him at the 22. It takes an auspicious bounce inside the 10 for the Tigers. And 92 yards away is quarterback Jordan Travis after that 49 yard punt. This guy, folks, has been on fire. The turning point was the second half of that loss against Louisville, where the offense started to play better. And then the tipping point really was when he made two great plays, two great runs during the dying moments of their home game that resulted in a win set up a game winning field goal against Syracuse Travis a little RPO tries to take off and tripped over the five yard line and he'll lose a yard Trenton Simpson making the tackle for Clemson. This Clemson defense has been the reason why they've been in as many games they have, right, Robert? They have. Clemson's defense has carried this team all along. And you say, well, they're four and three. Yeah, but it's not because the defense hasn't been playing well. It's because they've been struggling on offense. Right there, you saw Jordan Travis try to take off and run. And even though you might not have seen the explosiveness there, you're going to see at some point in this game just how special he is. McDonald in motion. He's their leading receiver. The handoff and nowhere to go for Jay Sean Corbin. Simpson with his second consecutive tackle and it's going to be third and long for Florida State. Yeah you see him right here right there at the top of the screen just he's just antsy to get in that backfield right he said I don't care who you got Jay Sean Trey Sean Nation I'm going to get him down on the ground. <laughs> Those running backs have been producing a lot of yards during this winning streak. 
third and 13 for Jordan Travis. He hands it off. There's a flag down. Nowhere to go for Corbin. We might have had an offside there, it looked like, against Clemson. That's cool. Offside. Defense number seven. Five drop penalty. Repeat third down. So the Seminoles will get an op another opportunity from the 10 yard line. Yeah, just great use of the snap count there by Jordan Travis to get Justin Maskell to jump off sides and get another opportunity, right? Another crack at this third down here. This is not what they're normally used to, so third and eight is what Clemson's defense wants to have them in. Let's see what they can do to stay on the field. A little movement up front again by Clemson. Another flag down. Travis completes the pass to about the 14-yard line to Toa Fili. But we're going to have another offside against Clemson. This time it was Specter that moved. And Brett Venables has to be a little upset right now. And uh, Dabo, offside. of course, is a defense. Five-yard penalty. Repeat third down. Yeah, you see him right here talking to Justin Maskell, getting on him about jumping off sides. He's, he's upset, right? This yeah. isn't the Clemson way. This isn't how they go out and play football. Yeah. Penalties, they have to stop shooting themselves in the foot here early if they want to get the momentum. Third and three. Travis looking to throw. Escapes a tackler. Let's go of it. Complete at the 30 yard line. I'm not sure it was intended for Wilson, but he made the grab nonetheless, and they moved the chains. There was a missed tackle by Tyler Davis. Look, I told you at some point in this game, you're going to see just how special Jordan Travis here. Boom, Tyler Davis. That's an NFL guy. Mm -mm, can't tackle me. And then what's he do? He throws it to the receiver who's praying to God on the sideline. He's on his knees. What's going on? How about that, Robert? I think it was actually intended for McDonald. He was in the neighborhood, too. First and 10. This time nowhere to go. He's going to be stopped up at the 20 yard line, 28 yard line. Jordan Travis, a row, row, row. Oh, yeah. Ruka row, row said, Look, man, we don't like it. We don't like this guy, Jordan Travis, running around on us. We're going to make sure we get in the backfield like we talked about the keys earlier. They got to play behind the line of scrimmage and get these guys to play behind the chains like this right here second and long over 200 yards in six of the last seven games on the ground mostly from Corbin and Ward right now Trayshawn Ward in the ball game subbing in for Corbin comes in bringing a little run blitz and they're going to stop this up for no gain nowhere to go for Ward's stopped by Skowski. Skowski, one of the real beacons defensively for Clemson. Six year senior decided to return after being slowed by a groin injury last year that required subsequent surgery. We saw him a few games ago get shaken up. It seemed what looked like a stinger, but good to see him back. Yeah, it was the same game that uh, Brian Brzee got hurt. Right. And uh, Skowski's a cause for them, but right now they're taking him off the field. Venables is drawing up some mad stuff. Third and 12. The pass is complete. What a grab. Again, it's Wilson coming up with a clutch clash. Got his foot down just in bounds. Oh, my. They said Jordan Travis couldn't throw. But this looks like a really good throw to me. Ontario Wilson, a.k.a. Pokey. Nice grab, but I don't know if he got his foot down. Let's see. Oh. oh it, looked, it looked like he was trying to get his foot down, and it hit the foot. Yeah, uh, Jalen Phillips there before he could get down. It's not going to be a catch, guys. Yeah, initially ruled a catch, but they're going to look at this. With nine minutes, 11 seconds to go in the first quarter on Seminoles opening drive. The receiver did not complete the process of the catch inbound. The pass was incomplete. It's fourth down. Here's what it looked like. Ontario Wilson's catch incomplete Robert didn't get that foot down yeah that sleeve the leg with the sleeve on it he was trying to get that foot down but it hit the foot of Jalen Phillips as he was trying to come down so uh, you know maybe if one of those butt cheeks had fallen in bounds uh, it would have been a catch but he didn't so they're putting the ball away to country Mastromano former Aussie rules player 
Air mails it. Fair catch called by Brown and his first and ten from there. Well, it's statement Saturday and our Saturday night matchup presented by Capital One. Another Big Ten battle. Number 20 Penn State travels to Columbus to take on number five, the Buckeyes at the shoe. 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific on ABC and the ESPN app. One app, one tap. Big Cinco back in for his second series at quarterback. Robert, you talked about him having to play free today. What does that look like on the field? Yeah, we'll get back to that right after they run this okay. play. Here he is. He's going to hand it off. Actually, he keeps it. Didn't give it to Shipley, and Lovett makes the stop. So when you talk about DJ and playing free, he's trying to play too perfectly. It's almost as if there's too many voices in his head, and they've okay. had to clear that up for him to make the game simple for him again. He's got the talent. He's got the arm strength, but they're not executing on game day, and you wonder why, and I think they're just trying to get him in a flow and a rhythm. See if he can have some early success. Fires complete to the sideline, and Gata makes the catch. Joseph and Gata. The leading receiver yardage wise on this Tigers squad adds 14 more to his total and it's a first down. That's the type of play right exactly and that helps him having Joseph and got back who missed last week is a big thing for this offense and letting DJ see the ball completed is also big for him. Hands it off to Shipley Shipley picks up about two Brownlee Jr. Making the tackle on the play Will Shipley was injured several weeks ago in a game when we had them against North Carolina State he was expected to be out as long as six weeks but he came back last week in their loss against Pitt but Robert early on it's just early he doesn't seem to be as explosive as he was when we saw him. you know usually when you get hurt in the middle of the year you're never going to be 100 percent when you come back during that same season second and nine three <laughs> Anglele completes it to EJ Williams his forward progress is going to be right near that first down marker picks up 10 and they move the chains again and they're going quick up at the 47 yard line trips right hands it off to Shipley in between the tackles picked up a tough three yards Kalen Deloach making the tackle gains about two Well, they're down Kobe Pace at the tailback position today. So Shipley and Phil Moffa will see most of the carries. Second down and eight. Moffa in the ball game. Little RPO. Receiver screen complete to Justin Ross. Still on his feet all the way down to the 32. Comes up stopping as they move the sticks again. Listen, this entire offense just needs good things to happen for them, right? It's been a struggle all year. So little screen passes, runs by DJ, open routes to the single receiver side to Joseph Ngata. These are all things that are getting guys involved early and often so they feel like they're in a rhythm throughout the game. That has been big for them today so far. 18-yard gain. Uyangale under duress and wisely throws it out of bounds beyond the line of scrimmage outside the pocket no flag no grounding Jackson and Keir Thomas with pressure there there's a look at Thomas number four who holds that seminal defense to a high standard one of the louder voices and leaders on that side of the ball oh yes he is without a doubt Keir Thomas Jermaine Johnson who's a top 10 pick in the NFL draft the way that he's playing with six and a half sacks these guys are formidable man this is not an easy front that comes in his face every day. DJ was five for five he hands it off to Moffa. Picks up about three on the play. McClendon pushing him out of bounds. So yeah you're talking about this play right here with DJ when they run the RPO with the screen involved right they know right here this is the guy that they want to get and they want to get him the ball in space so he can make a play if you make one guy miss that's a big play and these big plays have been few and far between all year for this Clemson offense so you love to see them getting the ball in their playmakers hands and making plays early in the game Williams in motion DJ fires had it tipped at the line of scrimmage it's incomplete and it sets up a fourth down now in what was a very impressive drive for the Tigers up to that point. They're uh, 
on the fringes of field goal range here. Let's see what they decide. They're going to go for it. Oh, yeah. About, uh... Now, we've talked with Dabo during the week, and he said this team just needs to be opportunistic. And you see that right there. They put a good drive together, and then boom, it just falls out from the underneath him. From 47 yards out, BT Potter drills it. And Clemson strikes first with 532 to go in the first quarter. Uyunglele with a measure of success on that previous drive. 1903, football player coached by John Heisman. Now, in his Bible, he diagrams plays, but also wrote out Heisman's advice. A listing of do's and don'ts. Okay. Mm. I thought there was only Heisman one Bible. Here. Yeah. I thought there was <laughs> only one Bible. <laughs> it's a pretty cool story, though, hey, man. Saying your prayers at night and open that thing up and get reminded, I guess. Yeah, I guess it gives new meaning to football's religion down here, yes. huh? Yeah. You know? It is church. <laughs> First and ten. For quarterback. Gordon Travis. Roger to go. We're going to take a short little break and come right back on the other. Welcome back, everyone. Let's take a look at this week's college football rankings brought to you by PlayStation. Hey, big news as Michigan State defeats Michigan, Georgia, and Florida playing right now. I don't know about you, Robert. I'm a big Bearcat fan. I think Cincinnati is going to be in or deserves to be in that top four in the college football playoff. Listen, Cincinnati has been playing well. They're not going to have the resume to justify it, but I do believe they should get in. Jordan Travis hands it off to Tofili. Picks up about seven yards on the play. Abo Sweeney looking to press that right emotional button. Pull that right emotional string with his players. It's been a frustrating last several weeks for the perennial ACC champs. And he has a unique way of loving on his players here. And it's worked over the years. The pass complete to Williamson, who picks up the first down for the Seminoles. Can't say enough about the play of Jordan Travis in this resurgence of the Seminoles over the last three games. Picks up 15 on that play. Yes, Jordan Travis had five touchdowns against North Carolina in what was deemed by many to be an upset. No one expected him to win that game, but he was the, cat the catalyst of that, and this offensive line has been playing at a high level in this three-game winning streak that they're on. First and 10 from the 46. Hands it off to Corbin, and Corbin picks up about three on the play. Saw those prolific rushing numbers over the winning streak for the Seminoles between Corbin and Ward. Sets up a second and eight. You talk about their rushing. Also, Jordan Travis became the first quarterback in FSU history with back-to-back 100-yard -back games earlier in the year. So they know what their bread and butter is, but they're going to have to throw it a little bit today. Fake the reverse. Boy, that one never really seemed to happen for the Seminoles, Robert. Well covered on different levels. Setting up a third down and eight. Here's what Jordan Travis had to say. I think we're getting used to winning now and know how it feels. We know how it feels to lose. We don't think we want to feel like that anymore, Quinn. You watch this team play against Wake Forest when we did earlier in the season. They're a new team today. Travis from West Palm Beach, Florida, went to Louisville. He was unhappy. He transferred. All he wanted was a chance, and now that he's gotten a chance, his confidence is brimming. This is a young man. He likes to get hit. He can make you miss in the phone booth, but he's a long strider in space. Look at his eyes and confidence. Hands it off just in time to Corbin. Busting loose. Corbin in the secondary. And slips and falls at the 27-yard line. Corbin made Skalski miss on a tackle which added yardage to that run, Robert. Oh, yeah, Jay Sean Corbin. You see the blitz right here by number 12, Venables. And the best play for the blitz sometimes is the zone read game with the running back and the quarterback. As soon as you break the line of scrimmage, there's nobody else there. And that's exactly what you saw with Jay Sean Corbin. Great run, great play call, timely against that blitz. This time he keeps it. Travis on the move brought down Collard at the 20 yard line. 
But a nice gain by Travis. Maskell making the stop on the play as we approach three minutes to go here in the opening quarter. When you talk about this rushing attack, right? They're averaging 6.91 yards per rush in the month of October. That's that, a lot of real estate. That's a lot of real estate. <laughs> that is why they have had this resurgence. This is why they're on fire right now, and they're feeling that Uncle Mo on their side. This is going to be Ward inside the 10. Boy, that offensive line, Scott, Gibbons, Smith, Love, Taylor, and Washington with good movement up front, Robert. Found a crease to gain 11. Oh, yeah, you see it right here. He's going to come around across the formation, make this block for Treshawn Ward with the kick out. Boom. All he has to do is occupy Skalski for a second. Ward still in in the backfield. Great sidestep. Slammed on the brakes and took some ankles. And we might have another Clemson offside penalty. Trey Williams. Offside. Oh, Defense yeah. Defense number eight. Five yard penalty. Repeat first down. Boy, the Tigers with some pejorative, deleterious penalties early in the first quarter. Three already. Yeah. I can tell you what, Coach Brent Venables is not coaching them to do that stuff. Mm. They're shooting themselves in the foot too often right now, jumping off sides, committing penalties, and it's allowing Florida State to move down the field with a little bit more ease. Maybe they're getting a little tired. Mm. You never know. Maybe they need to rotate some of those guys on the inside. Ward in the backfield. On first and goal. Looking for a crease. Besides on the right side and KJ Henry. First one to get there stops that movement for a gain of about two. Trishon Ward an interesting story for the Seminoles. A former walk on. Who just this past spring earned a scholarship. And has really lit it up this season. In fact he became folklore last year as he led the scout team to a lot of wins against the first and second stringers. He was uh, what I like to call first team all American all scout team. Oh yeah. Got put on Scully. And that's why he got put on Scully. But you see him here. They got him spread out. Be aware for that quarterback draw off the box is light enough. They go empty. That's exactly what it is partner. But he got stopped at the two yard line. Jordan Travis gained a few before Trenton Simpson stepped in. And makes another tackle. He's got three already today. You know, the most impressive thing about Florida State right now is that they've had 16 straight scores in the red zone. Right there, I didn't like the box count for Jordan Travis to take that quarterback draw, and he actually had Ontario Wilson wide open in the middle of the field, mm. uncovered. They forgot to cover him because that's how much focus they're putting on stopping Jordan Travis in that running game. I don't know if that was the call, if he had an opportunity to make the throw, but if he did, he needed to hit that. Here Let's we go. see what they do right here. Corbin in the backfield, third and goal. Keeps it, and the whistle blown before the play. Prior to the snap, charge timeout. Clemson. Tigers take a timeout with 23 seconds. All right, thanks a lot, Matt. Third and goal coming up. Let's go back to that previous play. You said he had a man open. Yes, you'll see it right here. They've got this box count. With the guys, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, and I'm like, ah, that's not a great look for the quarterback draw. But right here, you see them, they blitz off the edge. Oh, wow. And here, look, all he's got to do is see that man right there. They call him Pokey, and he's wide open. Typically, on these types of plays, you have the option to run it or throw it. Right. It's not just an RPO when you can hand it off to the running back, it's also for the quarterback. And when he sees that, he can make that play. Jordan Travis right there was so focused on making that run, he missed Hokey wide open in the end zone. See if he gets another opportunity here on third and goal. Torfili in the backfield. They empty out now the formation. Travis rolls right, flag down on the play. Into the end zone, incomplete. Ah, I think they called the play dead. Yep. So loud in here, you couldn't hear the whistle. Clemson, Clemson players pointing the other way at Florida State, of course. Seminoles pointing at Tiger players, of course. Here's the call. Ball. Offside in the neutral zone, causing the offense to react. Defense number 55. Penalty is half the distance to the goal. Repeat third down. That's against Page. Now that's four penalties against Clemson's defense. It's this guy right here. He's just a little early. Peyton Page. 
Man, that's a phenomenal job by Florida State. They've gotten at least three or four of those already in this game. Getting them to jump off sides and get free plays. You got to love it. Third and goal again. Corbin back in the backfield. They empty out the formation again. Travis pitches it quick. Touchdown Seminoles. Corbin with the score. Man, I love the design of this play right here. What is Clemson doing? They've got three guys out there, and Clemson only had two defenders to defend it. Bad numbers. That's bad numbers, man. Look, I'll show you right here. This is two defenders from Clemson, right? And three Florida State Seminoles. I don't know who's not throwing that one. A lot of times when they have these motions, what we say is if nobody goes, I throw. Okay. So we motion them out of the backfield. If nobody goes out there. Extra point block. Oh, wow. Clemson holds them, and it's just 6-3. to three. Fitzgerald's extra point blocked by Malcolm Ray. Pardon me. By Miles Murphy. It was that got a hand on it, but an impressive 10 play touchdown drive for the Seminoles. Man. Clemson's resulting in just a field goal. Hey, what was that little rhyme you said? What was it? If, if nobody, nobody goes, goes, I throws. Okay. So did you write that? No, no, I can't. <laughs> I did not write that. Listen, we talk about it in offensive meeting rooms. Right. When we motion these guys out and we're right. trying to get a number count. If if only two guys go out and we had three out there, make the throw. There's only so much space to get to the end zone, and right there, for whatever reason, Clemson's defense didn't communicate enough to get three guys to go out and make that play. Nobody goes, I throw. Okay. You like that? I one? love that. Hey, hey, man. You hit me with some poetry out here. You know, the lengths and uses on you. <laughs> 19 seconds to go in the first quarter. Robert, I don't think that Seminoles could, could have drawn up a better beginning so far as they seem to maintain that burgeoning confidence that they come in here with on a three game winning streak. Took up a lot of time on that drive. Shipley back on his goal line. It will come out first and 10 from the 25. Back to Matt Berry. All right, guys, a story with Texas Tech. They fired their head coach, Matt Wells. They get Oklahoma on the road here. Caleb Williams. What a sh does this thing. Stays up on his feet. Look at this throw. Wide open touchdown to Mario Williams. Oklahoma takes a 7 0 lead. Here comes Texas Tech. Eric Azutama. Look at the grab. We are tied at seven in Norman. All right, thanks a lot, Matt. First and ten back here for Clemson. The young away out of the shotgun. Into a tight window. Wow, an impressive completion to Joseph Engada. Threw that with confidence, Robert. Mm, he did. But have you noticed that everything that Clemson seems to do offensively and has just felt like it's hard? Yeah. Right? You know, in basketball, right. you want to get the easy layup wide sure. open. You don't want to have to always dribble that around and do the shoot a fadeaway first jumper. Quarter. First 15 minutes in the books. The Seminoles with a 6 to 3 lead. Remember, folks, if nobody goes, he throws. Back with the second quarter. Welcome back, everyone, to Memorial Stadium, Clemson University. Florida State with the lead on the eve of Halloween. I'm going to grab myself a Heisman Trophy at the costume store and go as Robert Griffin III <laughs> trick-or-treating. That, that's my deal. Will Shipley on the carry picks up six yards. If you could go as one person for Halloween, Robert, who would you go as? If I could go as one person for Halloween. Besides me. The besides, 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 besides me. Besides Mark Jones. <laughs> who? Oh, man. I'd have to go for my, as my wife. 100%, oh, wow. You know? Hey. That, that's some points, man. You know, that's points. You got me on that one. I appreciate Joe. that, man. <laughs> <laughs> Downfield intended for Justin Ross, incomplete. It'll be second down and 10. You know, this Clemson team has endured a litany of infirmities, injuries that have really crippled them, especially on the defensive side of the football. And Rick Swinney has had to deal with that, amongst other things, losing key players at key spots for short times and for the season that four and three record is the result of all that Shipley one of the bright spots picking up the first down on the 10 yard gallop 
And he comes limping off the field a little bit, Quint. Yeah, Shipley, one of uh, many guys who has missed, missed time for Clemson this year. In seven games, they've started 43 different players this season. You go back to a national title year in 2018, they started 32 ac uh, across the entire season. So it's been lack of continuity, especially on this offensive line. Matt Bockhorst hurt last week. They've got a, a new front five this week, as you see this week to the right. And, it's been hard to practice. It's been hard to find continuity and confidence, Mark. Yeah, Brockhorst, one of their leaders, their voice on the offensive line. And, you know, everybody points the spotlight on the quarterback, Robert. As you well know, that's just the way it is in football. But it's been a, a compilation of things that have just missed and misfired that have led to this offense that is only averaging 20 points a game this year. As you said, quarterbacks get all the blame and they get all the praise. But. A lot of the criticism has come back on Tony Elliott, the offensive coordinator, and people have to realize he's been dealing with different personnel groups every single week. DJ back to pass. Great catch by Shipley and spin move. A little midfield sauce and spin. He got away from DJ Lundy to pick up the first down. Look at Will Shipley, right? DJ, Uwe Ungale. Makes a throw, spin cycle. Here we go. Get vertical, baby. Oh man, you just this game's so fun, right? You'd love to see these guys go out here and making plays. First down and ten. Little counter. Shipley still on his feet. Picks up about six down to the 31. This drive has been a steady diet of Will Shipley from the North Carolina area. Actually, on social media last year none other than Christian McCaffrey saw his great play coming out of Weddington North Carolina and gave him a shout out on Instagram the young throws it out of bounds dangerously close to the sideline here Thomas was in hot pursuit of DJ and we're going to have a third down and five. Mm, Jamie think... Robinson there uh, trying to make the interception ran out of space and he knocked over one of the photographers on the sideline. Got to keep your head on a swivel Robert. Hey man got to keep your head on a swivel brother. Oh golly he hit him. Oh into another one. It's a domino effect out there. Woo. Always keep your eye on the football. Third down and five. DJ incomplete for Shipley at the 25 and it'll be fourth down and four. Now what do they do here? Mm. They're going to send in the field goal unit. BT Potter made one earlier. Man that was a really good route by Will Shipley out of the backfield. A little Texas route right. comes outside boom six foot in the ground across the face of the linebacker and that right there was a situation where look. Maybe Shipley could have helped the brother out and make right. the catch. Right. But at the same time, DJ needed to make the appropriate throw in that situation. Guy's wide open. Yeah. Give him an easy catch of the ball. He's a running back. Potter going to try and nail this one from 49 yards out. Made one earlier from 47. And he shanks this one off to the left. Missing it badly. At 12 12 to go in the second quarter. Yeah, that is. The anguished look, which is all too familiar right now here at Clemson. Man, they're still not firing on all cylinders. You look, DJ here, he tries to do a stiff arm, misses, and I'm pretty sure he wants a field goal. 12 12 to go in the first half. Mark Jones chopping it up with Robert Griffin, the third. Quint Kessinick down on the field. The Seminoles with the football. And the handoff to Corbin. Jay Sean Corbin picks up about three, close to four. Well, tomorrow. On a special Halloween edition of Sunday NFL Countdown, the stories behind the NFL's most unusual superstitions. Plus, one on one with Patrick Mahomes as the Chiefs look to get back on track. Kick off your Sunday morning with Countdown at 10 a.m. Eastern Time on ESPN. The Chiefs struggling. Weird. Yes, they are uh, struggling offense and defense. See if they can get it turned around, right? Kind of like Clemson. On second and six. Handed off again to Jay Sean Corbin. Kept those legs moving. What was your strangest superstition? Oh man, listen. I had to listen to 
Michael Jackson's thriller before every game. Wow. Okay. Because when you step out on that field, it's thriller time. Okay. Okay. I see the connection. Especially if it was a night game, because you know they say the freaks come out at night. Okay. So. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. I'm not superstitious, but I'm a little suspicious. Just a little. I like that. Little blitz coming from the Tigers. They pick it up, but nowhere to go for Wilson. Swarm Skalski, one of the guys to get there. Trenton Simpson gave him a little bit of help. They lose a yard on the play, and fourth down coming up. Boy, that Clemson defense shows you why they're number three in the country in scoring defense, allowing just 14. Point six points per game. They got some guys on that side. They do, and we talked to Brent Venables this week, and he said that they they didn't go back and watch last week's mistakes and, and corrections. They watched the entire year's third and fourth down package to make sure that they could be more efficient at getting off the field on third downs to give their offense more opportunities. Astromano with the punt down to 22. Fair catch as we go back to the studio. All right, thank you, Robert. Checking in, Jarrett, Daigie, Bryce, Ford, Wheaton. Watch the grab. Keeps the feet inbounds. Iowa State up 31-24 in the third quarter. All right, thanks a lot, Matt. As DJ comes back onto the field, you talked about listening to Thriller. DJ telling us several weeks ago he listens to a little West Coast music, a little... Nipsey Hustle. Mm. Last time that I checked. RIP. Off on the backfield. Off <laughs> Broke through the first wave and on his way across midfield. Still on his feet. Finally brought down inside the 15. Sage Ennis with a nice block to help spring him loose on the first explosive play of the game for the Tigers, 63 yards. Oh my, Phil Maffa coming across the formation, running through arm tackles. Mm, mm, mm. That's a bad Maffa. Oh my <laughs> Lord, look at him go. Oh, shut your mouth. Oh, shut your mouth, <laughs> running people over, you gotta love it. First and 10, DJ hands it off to Shipley, down to the 10 yard line. Got about four yards on the play. Bill Moffa, a true freshman mm. from Loganville, Georgia. Busts a 63 yard run. And, and has look, them in the red zone. He's only getting his opportunity because Kobe Pace is out with COVID, right? They had Lynn J. Dixon and Michael Dukes going to transfer portal earlier this year. He's making the most of it. Little RPO, he tosses it to Moffa again. This time brought down for a loss of about two. As a game manager, what do you make of the way DJ's making his calls and handling them? I feel like Tony Ellis doing a good job of getting him uh, completions, right? right? Easy throws. And when they're taking their shots, DJ's not making the big mistakes. Okay. And that's why they've been able to move the ball methodically down the field. And he, he's the center of attention. Let's make no mistake about it. He is the story with NIL, with the expectations coming into the year, replacing Trevor Lawrence, everything. It's about DJ Uyunglele. And Welcome back everyone to Memorial Stadium Clemson University right now trailing six to three well weekend Monday Night Football big game both teams Giants look to make it two wins in a row while Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs in a virtual must win situation a game under 500 eight Eastern on ESPN Deportes and the ESPN app our coverage begins with Monday Night Countdown at six Eastern three Pacific third and seven. DJ into the end zone on the fade. Caught. Touchdown. Davis Allen. Big time delivery from DJ Uyangale. Like we said at the beginning of the broadcast, DJ Cinco just played a hit, baby. Right there. Phenomenal throw. Getting the ball to Davis Allen, high pointing it. Oh man, right there going up against Travis J. Gets his feet in, 
You gotta love it, man. Big time catch. Wow. Big time catch. Big time throw. Davis Allen with his first touchdown reception of the season, the fifth of his career, and maybe that will catalyze a little bit more confidence for the sophomore. From Cali to Clemson, it's all good vibes and smooth music right now for that deep grab a moment ago, capping a four-play 77-yard drive set up by Clemson's longest play of the season, that 63-yard scamper from Moffa. It'll be first and 10 for the Seminoles. Let's go back to the studio. All right, guys, the ACC took a hit today when Pitt went down to Miami. Now Sam Hartman, Wake Forest, undefeated. He can do this as well. Take it on Duke, 26-yard touchdown. It is all Demon Deeks early, 14-0. I'm disappointed in you, Robert. No love for for Hartman. Look, or man, Heisman. Sam Hartman has led Wake Forest to undefeated, and right oh, there man. he said, "Listen to me, man. I'm running for this bad boy." None other than Chris Paul told me Wake Forest is a football school. They have been this year. That's, That's what he told me sure. just a few days ago. First and ten for the Seminoles from the 25. To a feely in motion. Got a man down the sidelines. It's him, Tofili, and he is off. One man to beat. Cuts it back and brought down at the 20-yard line by Sheridan Jones. They're going to say touchdown. He landed on somebody. Tofili with the magic act, and they're calling it a touchdown. 75 yards. Oh my goodness. What a roll. Lawrence Toa Field is feeling good, baby. Everybody here is shocked. Me included. Oh, wow. He must have landed on the Clemson tackler, Sheridan Jones, and rolled right into stride. Let's take one more look. Watch it right here. He goes down on top of the guy. Oh, my. Lands on his feet like a ballerina <laughs> and keeps going. What a play. That is some twinkle Toa Feely. <laughs> That's some twinkle Toa Feely. Oh, my Lord. 30 years of college football, I've never quite seen a play like this one. He's over there tiptoeing in his Jordans down the sideline. Look at that. Close Unbelievable. reviewed by the video officials. The extra point is good this time. So it's a three-point lead for the Seminoles. You have to go back to Michael Dyer of Auburn in the 2010 National Championship game to see a play like this where it appears he's down, but he's really not, Robert. No, he is not. Listen, man. Right here, Sheridan Jones tries to get him down, but he falls on top of him, and he just bounces back up. He's doing some balance drills. I don't know what he's doing. Look at the rep. I was like, I can't believe this. This man's like, oh, my goodness. Did he stay in bounds? Yep, right there. He keeps his feet in bounds. Lawrence Toro Philly's telling Phil Moffa, hey man, anything you can do, yeah. I can do better. That was Florida State's longest pass of the season. And that's just the way things have been going for these two teams recently. You see the reaction from Coach Sweeney and on the other side, boy, Mike Norvell has his team rolling right now. And the beneficiary of a little bit of good fortune there. As they take the lead 13 to 10, 8 14 to go in the first half. Shipley from the two. And he's brought down inside the 20 at about the 18 yard line. It'll be first down and 10 from there. Well, this season, along with their contributions to universities' general scholarship funds, for every field goal an extra point made, all state will also be donating to the American Red Cross to help with disaster relief efforts. Thank you, Allstate. So first and 10 for DJ Uya Ungalale. Man, I still got to go back to that Lawrence Toa Philly play. Yeah. That was a special play by a special player. <laughs> Holy cow. Just incredible. Mind blown. Last time we saw DJ completed the pass to Davis Allen for a touchdown. Little receiver screen to Justin Ross. Folks, let me tell you about number eight. When you're looking for inspirational stories, not just on the football field, but beyond, this guy might be the comeback player of the year. He had spinal surgery, two of them, 
after discovering a rare spinal issue a couple of years ago in what he thought was a routine stinger. He missed last year and is back this season. On the counter, it's Shipley stopped at the 25. And just to put in perspective the type of medical assistance and help and complications he got from it, Ryan Shazier's surgeon got involved with the surgery and the advice to help him out to get back on the football field. And it culminates with him getting back on and playing, Robert. It really is a miracle. You know, sometimes they say, if you know, you know. But also, if you don't know, you don't know. And if he never got that checkup, he wouldn't be able to get that fixed, and it could have been life threatening for him. Had a congenital fusion, which is a little bit more complicated than it sounds. Third and two, DJ gonna keep it himself and picks up the first down. Picks up four on the play. Let's go one more time one more look at that touchdown they motioned him out of the backfield he got open Robert yeah even before that they motioned him out from wide I saw that they had zone coverage got him out there by himself they forgot about him thought they tackled him and what does he do he just bounces back up what is this guy Michael Myers is he never gonna die yeah, yeah the Walendas would have been proud of that tightrope job Shipley no tight roping here just rolling up his sleeves Playing a little smash ball. Akeem Dent finally making the tackle, but he picks up a first down on the 14 yard gain. Approaching six minutes to go in the first half. Clemson trying to answer here. Coming in with a record of four and three overall. And the Seminoles are going to be offsides here. DJ throws it, and it's going to be caught by Justin Ross. Inside the 40 at the 38. Ross just kept playing. Yeah, it appears they had a free play there. Outside. Defense number four. Penalty is declined. It's first down. You see their, yeah, you see their offensive line. They get Keir Thomas to jump off sides. DJ Uyungle knows he's got a free play. Gives an opportunity ball to Justin Ross. And I don't know if there's anybody else better to throw to on that one. DJ open over the middle complete. And another first down for Bringstool. Look at this. DJ Uyunglele making the throw to Jake Bringstool. He's wide open in the middle of the field. I'm not going to complain about the completion. Okay. But listen, you can make an easier throw there and let that man keep running down the field. I get it. He'll take the completion, as you said, first. An 11 yard gain. EJ keeps it himself, spins off one would be tackler. Brought down for a two yard gain. A keen dent there to make the tackle. Make it a single yard on the pickup. 5.05 to play. What do you make of the work of the Seminoles' defense so far? Yeah, I think right now they're playing a, a little bit of a bend don't break. Okay. Right? We've seen Amari Gainer make a bunch of plays earlier in this game, and, and they've really done a nice job of, of bottling up Clemson's offense as they move down the field. But this is the best thing for Clemson right now. Stay on the field, keep your defense on the sideline, and go get points. That's what they need right now. Shipley again. A dash up the middle. Shipley, first and goal, Clemson from the three. Shipley with a little education and acceleration for the first down. 22 yards and all. Mm. Look at him right here. This Clemson offensive line has been under fire all year. He rides the wave, gets vertical, splits two, and gets him down into the red zone. I like this Shipley kid. Gets another call here. Picks up two to about the two yard line. Amari Gaynor making the tackle. Had some help from Keir Thomas. Shipley so far this afternoon has run the ball 11 times for a total of 76 yards. Gabo Sweeney said he was our best player the first couple of games of this season before he got hurt. And not just the best player, but he said he's also one of their best leaders. Leads by example. We love that from your running backs, especially you young guys like him. Collins in motion. Shipley again. Touchdown, Clemson! 
And they answered the touchdown by the Seminoles with one of their own. His sixth touchdown of the season. Man, this is going to be a war of attrition today out there on the field. These guys are running the ball left and right. These defensive linemen on both sides, both teams are getting a little gassed. Woo! We're going to be in for a doozy here. They're putting up more points than anybody really expected. That's the surprise. Shipley back in a good way. He was disappointed with himself for dropping a big pass in the second quarter in that loss against Pitt last week. But atonement is his this afternoon. Yes, it is. And they've been riding him all day, trying to get him the ball out in space, handing the ball off to him, letting him know that he can put his shoulder down and go get plays. He's making catches right, right there. A little bit behind him, he makes that play. And then here he is getting vertical, showing off that speed. You know, he might just be getting back into the flow of it all okay. after being out for all those games. And right there, holding on to the ball as he gets into the end zone. Get that man some oxygen. They've been <laughs> riding him like a horse. Ten rushes, pardon me, ten plays, 83 yards on the drive. You know, Shipley is a guy who loves his sartorial splendor. In fact, he wears around special kicks. He's got these air monarchs. Oh, don't talk about that. <laughs> These Nike Air Monarchs that he likes to wear around. They're the kind of shoes that your dad might wear. All right? I'll just come correct on that. He gets teased often by his teammates. But with the kind of production he's having today, Matt Berry, nobody's going to tease him. Back to you in the studio. Now, my guy Joey Galloway likes a good set of kicks, too. Coming up on the Lexus Halftime Report, Sparty in Michigan. What a classic we had there. Plus, Georgia, Florida kind of messing around a little bit. Georgia just scored a touchdown. We'll show you highlights. Plus, Caleb Williams just tearing it up in the first half. Sam Hodgson, Joey Galloway, Matt Berry in our shoes that you won't see coming up on the Lexus Halftime Report. Yeah, Joey Galloway ain't wearing any Air Monarchs. And, and I ain't wearing no Air Monarchs. You ain't wearing no yeah. Air Monarchs. But, hey, he's getting rightfully yeah. picked off of them shoes. Looks like a Louis Vuitton type of guy for me. 340 to go, flag down. Offense, number seven, five-yard penalty. It's still first down. Still first down after the penalty. Uh, Joey Galloway, I think, is a Balenciaga type of guy. Oh, you think so? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. That's Florida State's first penalty. Important to point out, Robert, they've had five or fewer in the last several games, which coincides with their winning streak of three games. First and 15 from the 20. Little RPO. Travis kept it. I'm not sure that either option was a good one that time. Yeah, though, neither, neither option there was a good one. But to get back to your penalty thing, right. we talk about their identity and how they've found uh, their culture has kind of risen to the top during this three-game winning streak. They used to average nine penalties a game in the first three games, and now they're averaging 3.75 in the last four. That's culture changing. That's mm. talking about discipline. And honestly, they put up more points than most teams have against this defense. Uh, so they've been playing at a really high level today. Second and 15. Travis hands it off again. A lot of shakes from it from Treshawn Ward. Picks up three on the play. And now for today's Aflac trivia question. Aflac. Who holds the FBS record for most consecutive home wins? Robert, you're almost perfect on the season. I don't need to gas you up, but you're almost perfect. 31 in a row for... The Tigers, by the way, right? Who holds the FBS record for most consecutive home wins? Wow. I know that I, I, I know they have the current record. Okay. I don't know who has the record of I'm, that, but I'm, I'm gonna, I'll take a guess. I'm from Dave County. I'm gonna guess the Miami Hurricanes. They had a nice Ooh. streak going. Okay. I think it was 50 something at one point. Just a wild guess. Third and 12. This is gonna be Corbin. And he's tackled short of the first down. With 213 to go. Picked up four on the play. Skalski again in on another tackle. Good to see Skalski back. He's one of the leaders of that defense for Clemson. Remember earlier this season against Georgia Tech, it was him that made the touchdown saving tackle in a low scoring game in the shadows of their own goal line. There's a look at him. Oh, yeah. He's a football player. Oh, That's yeah. what he is. They, we call him Mr. Ten Rings, right? Because <laughs> he's won a lot and he's got ten rings to represent it. He might not be the heart and soul of the defense, but he's definitely the brain. And he gets all those guys lined up and ready to go. No doubt. On fourth down to punt from Mascomano. This is going to be Will Brown. 
with a nice return. Gets out to midfield. Good starting field position with 129 to go in the half. Now for the answer to today's Aflac trivia question. Aflac. Who holds the FBS record for most consecutive home wins? Robert? Uh, I'm going to rock with you. I'm going to say Miami. Why not? Dade County yeah, represent. Oh, look at that. Hey, My fir the first time I get a chance to take a bow all season. Listen, you got to respect your elders, right? <laughs> My man said Miami. I said, you know what? I'm going to rock with him. Why you got to talk? call me an elder, though? Hey, no, you're not. not Why old. you got to call me you're an elder? You're just older than me. <laughs> you're just older than me, you know? 129 to go. Uyunglele. He received his first D1 offer in the sixth grade. He set up a screen, but nowhere to go on the catch. By Maffa. Well read by the Seminoles defensively. What do you mean by respect your elders, man? I mean, I'm, I'm trying to keep it good, and you had to go there with the old stuff. Listen, I mean, I'm not, my feelings aren't really hurt. <laughs> Look, I'm just pretending, but no they one could would be. ever be able to tell <laughs> just how old Mark Jones is. Uyunglele couldn't find his receiver, Maffa. It'll be third and long in a blink, but. Speaking of age and poise, uh, what do you make of DJ to this point? We're almost the first half in the books. Yeah, he's playing better, okay. right? We, we talked to the coaches that said we might see okay, a little bit of out. Tyson Pumachan today right. and, and, and have them mix back and forth. But DJ's playing at a, at a level right now where there's no need to take him out of the game. He's not completely lighting it up, right. but at the same time, he's not making the big mistakes. They're winning this game. He's leading down the field against a hot Florida State team. We had an interesting conversation with Tony Elliott, the offensive coordinator for the Tigers, on the field before the game, and he told us that DJ was beginning to find his leadership voice uh, in terms of communications, in terms of speaking up a little bit more frequently with the guys on the offense to bring it all together. There's a look at Elliott up top, and what's that like, Robert, as a quarterback? You played that position to find that voice it doesn't come automatically right it doesn't come automatically and for a guy like DJ who was never that way to begin with right. when you don't have success right. throughout the year it feels harder for you to speak up and say those things as a player so for DJ you like to see the success that he's having today you like and to see the success that maybe can carry on throughout the rest of the year but I think the most important part for him has been his response to the adversity that's Mason Trotter who's down on the field the Clemson Tigers being assisted by the athletic training staff as for Tony Elliott back to him you know one of his mentors is the first ever black head coach at Mississippi State Sylvester Croom and Elliott has been conversing with him leaning on him a little bit with sage experience that he has Sylvester Croom bouncing things off of him and uh, it, it, it's a great relationship that the two of them have and in a time like this why not right yeah, Tony Elliott understands that criticism comes with the position that he is in he's the offensive coordinator they have had extreme success yes. over the last 10 yes. years right and this year it just hasn't been there and he understands that but even then it's still difficult for our coaches and players to handle that criticism mm -hmm. so he leaned on his mentors and he understands that grace always gets you farther right so he has been graceful he was very professional this week and and open with us sure. about the things that were going on and how they plan to fix those things moving forward. But listen, have they earned the right to have the trust of the Clemson faithful and the fans around the country? They probably have. But in this business, it's a recency business, and he understands where the criticism coming from. They run the draw, nowhere to go for Mafa. Malcolm Ray right there for the Seminoles. That defense at times for Florida State has been impervious. I can't get say, off the field. I can't say enough good things about him. Listen, this is not the defense we saw earlier this year. Oh, no, no, no. It definitely is not the defense that we saw earlier this year. And this defensive line is doing exactly what I said earlier in the broadcast for the keys. They are making Clemson's offense play behind the chains. This defensive line is penetrating. And it seems like they're almost sniffing out the plays before they're happening. You love to see that. If you're a Florida State fan, this defense is playing at a high level. Yes, it, you might be down right now 17 to 13. But they're keeping you in this game, and your offense has to respond when they get the ball back with 56 seconds left in the half. Yeah, defensive coordinator Adam Fuller, the Boston native, his defense playing great right now. Despite the four-point 
deficit. Seminoles will get the football back here. From the eight yard line. That's Treshawn Ward. 54 yard punt. It's been a long time since the Tigers have tasted defeat here in Death Valley. You'd have to go all the way back to November 12th, 2016 against the Panthers, who ironically handed them an L last week in Pittsburgh. James Conner's 20 yard touchdown run, one of the highlights for Pitt on that night, in a high scoring 43 42 win for Pittsburgh. Right now, the Seminoles with the football from their own 18 yard line. What a great crowd on hand here at Memorial Stadium. First down and 10. Boy, a little movement on that defensive line again, and Travis is going to be brought down. No flag this time. Remember, the Tigers have jumped off sides four times already in the first half. They have, but right there, they did a really nice job of a contained rush. There are some games that they ran, but their objective is to keep Jordan Travis in the pocket. Listen, this guy is beyond dynamic. Look, some people are even comparing him a little bit to Lamar Don't Jackson. Oh, oh. Now, listen to me. There is no other Lamar Jackson. Oh. But Jordan Travis has been making those types of plays during this three game winning streak for Florida State. So I think that was a really smart job by Brent Venables of doing a contained rush to make sure he's bottled up. And to the two big runs he had against Syracuse as part of the two minute drill which set up the winning field goal. First two quarters in the books. The Tigers with a 17 to 13 lead. Coach Norvell trying to keep his team's three game win streak alive. 30 minutes to play. But right now let's go back to the studio. Jonesy, thank you. As you come back to the studio, we call it the Lexus Halftime Report. Jacksonville, the host of Florida, Georgia. James Cook takes it in, 11-yard touchdown. Yeah, James Cook, running game going early for Georgia. Kind of a slow start for the Dogs. They just scored again 17-0 as we began the statement Saturday in East Lansing, Michigan, Michigan State, number six versus number eight. K. McNamara had an afternoon. Michigan takes a 30 to 14 lead. Second half, 30 14, Michigan winning. You would think they would put this game away. Yeah, you would think it was almost a blowout at that point. But then Peyton Thornton and Jaden Reed, 28 yards down at the one yard line. I saved down at the one because the rest of the day belonged to Kenneth Walker. It did. He had 197 rushing yards, five rushing touchdowns. And you knew it was going to be a good game because these rivalry games always come down to some craziness. They convert the two point conversion. Now it's an eight point game. 58 yards. Later, it's Kenneth Walker again. He's the best player on the field. And they convert another two point play. All of a sudden, we have a tie ball game in the fourth. How about that? Two touchdowns, two two point conversions, and then it's Walker right up the middle. Yeah, he went crazy. He, like, the, these are the most touchdowns that Michigan's given up ever. Kate McNamara, one, one other chance to do it at the end. He is picked off by Charles Brantley. Michigan State 8 0 for the first time since 2015. What a win for Mel Tucker. 37 to 33. And so you look at Harbaugh in these situations, it has not been good. 2 and 13 against top 10 teams. 0 and 6 now on the road against top 10 it, it teams. Was, it was looking good for a little bit. It was. And with that, welcome in Sam Otto, Joey Galloway, Matt Barry alongside. You had said a second ago, Harbaugh now all the conversation is <laughs> going to start again, even though he had this team unbeaten. Yeah. But Michigan State, we didn't know who they were until today, and now we know that they're a really, really good football team. You'd have thought Caden McNamara having a career day and the way he threw the ball in this game, up 30-14th in the third quarter, midway through the third quarter, uh, it looked like Jim Harbaugh was going to pull it off. Go on the road, beat a Michigan State team that's really good. But it was the run game of Michigan State and Kenneth Walker III. third. We thought they had to run the ball to win this game, but I also thought Peyton Thorne had to play well, and yep. he absolutely did not. They flat out ran the ball and was more physical than Michigan in the second half when it mattered. Yeah, and people talk about putting the team on your back. Kenneth Walker literally put the team on his back, even being down by two scores and two two-point conversions. It seemed like every time he touched the ball, something magical was going to happen. That's what we talk about when you talk about these Heisman moments. Sure. That felt like a Heisman moment for him. You, you, you've got him in there now. You, you would put him at the top. Yeah, I put him at the top because of the other guys we talk about, Bryce Young obviously is up there. Matt Corral, I, I don't like what he did against Alabama, but it seems like Kenneth Walker the third just shines at the brightest moments. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, the one thing that we'll discuss on college football final, those two two-point conversions you needed to have down that score, what execution for Michigan State as they get the win at home over Jim Harbaugh in Michigan. Still ahead. 
Pitt all of a sudden started getting everybody's attention. And then the Hurricanes came blowing to town. Tyler Van Dyke and company highlights of that coming up next. All the national attention after last week. One problem the rooster, Jalen Knight, Miami came to town. 40 yard touchdown run here. How about Miami was two and four to start this season. Now for the second straight week, they have a chance to knock off a ranked opponent. Yeah, Manny Diaz, look, it's been Miami's got the talent. That hadn't been the problem in the early part of the season here. Kenny Pickett tried to bring him back, ties the game. Yeah, Kenny Pickett's got the talent as well. Had over 500 passing yards in this game. And it looked like they were coming back to win it. Gentlemen, does Van Dyke, do we need to consider a helmet sticker for Van Dyke? Absolutely. 426 yards passing, three touchdowns in the big win against Pitt. 38-34. Look at both quarterbacks. 900 yards passing. Van Dyke's total is the most by a Miami quarterback against a ranked team in the last 25 seasons, while Pickett's marks at the Pitt single game program record. Quarterbacks were good. Only one could win. It was Tyler Van Dyke, the young quarterback for Miami. Cincinnati again. Not going to be in the cover of GQ, but they got the win here. Desmond Ritter to Josh Wiley. Yeah, Josh Wiley had himself a day. He had four catches, 79 yards, two touchdowns. Back-to-back -to -back week with multiple touchdowns. 31 to 12. Cincinnati remains unbeaten. Virtual lock implications for Joey, Oklahoma, Caleb Williams, and Texas Tech. Caleb, House Williams, Duck, under magic to a wide open Mario Williams. And look, if you're Texas Tech, look, send a blitz, send somebody. Do not allow Caleb Williams to stand in the pocket for 10 seconds. Of course, the story this week, Matt Wells fired Sonny Cumbie, the interim here, Williams to Marvin Mim, 67 yards. That's just a gamble that didn't pay off. Yeah, the bigger story of the week is Oklahoma woke up after last week. They were sleepwalking against Kansas. Now first half, Caleb Williams already has four passing touchdowns. Yeah, they're at home, later kickoff, had their coffee. Everything's good with Oklahoma now, right, Joe? Yeah, and the line on this game is Oklahoma minus 19. Going into halftime, 28-7, feeling pretty good. Oh, okay. I'm going to add you one more. Yeah, just make you feel better. How about Drake Stoops? Oh, look at that coach's kid next play. 28-7 at the half. Joey gave you the, the line implications. Sorry, I got it. Which is truly the most important part. Coming up, we'll break down a second half prediction between Clemson and Florida State. Can Mike Norvell go to Death Valley and pull off the upset in the second half? This halftime report is presented by Lexus. Experience amazing. Guys, the ACC rests on Wake Forest. Undefeated, taking on Duke. Sam Hartman to Ja'Cory Roberson. You know, with Wake, you get a lot of offense. Same team scored 70 points last week against Army. Hacha, where's Hartman in your Heisman discussion? Yeah, he's getting there, especially with last week's performance. And this week, he has 20, they have 28 points hey, uh, already. How many, how many people are you going to have in your Heisman? I said he's getting there. He's getting there. He ain't there, but hey, he's getting there. It's 15 let, players hey, deep right Don't now. let Joey Bull, <laughs> you put in there who you want. Texas and Baylor, Gary Bohannon. Time to start talking about Baylor in the Big 12. Baylor only has one loss so far in the Big 12. Sitting at number 16 right now. Interesting to see how high they can climb. 31 to 24, they get the win. Iowa State, West Virginia. Maybe the play of the day so far. Well, maybe in our game, the play of the day. But this one, Jet Dagan to Bryce Ford Wheaton. Yeah, way to get that foot down. But more than that, this is a heck of a game. One score game, less than six, seven minutes left. Joey, your receiver, break this down. This is hopefully my foot gets down. Please come down, foot. Because he can't tell where his body is right now. This is a great catch. But the key is catch the ball first, let the rest of it happen. A remarkable play. That's a, that game is just all over the place. 38-31 there midway through the fourth quarter. We've got a good one. Memorial Stadium. 17-13 at the half as the Seminoles try to make it four wins in a row on the season and snap their five-game losing streak against Clemson. Let's take a look at our first half stats brought to you by PlayStation. And when you look at the numbers that really uh, jump off the screen, Florida State with its longest pass play of the season. And that Mafa run was Clemson's longest play of the season. That speaks volumes about where their offense is, but there are signs of them making breakthroughs this afternoon. The Seminoles will receive the kick to start the third quarter. And they'll go first and 10 from their own 25 yard line. Well, you've heard about Sports Center top 10 plays. Forget it. We got Robert Griffin's top three plays. Here we go. We got Phil Moffa. They were trying to hide him. They didn't want to play him this year, but they had some injuries, and he's a bad Moffa. We got a number two. We got DJ to DA with the back shoulder fade, high pointed. And then number one, we got Mr. Tiptoe of Philly down the sideline, not going down for the state with the big time 75 yard touchdown reception. Mm. I'm not sure that we're going to see a more unique touchdown all season than that one. From the 25, first and 10. 
pass complete. Jordan Travis finds his receiver. That's McLean, Malik McLean with the grab. Robert, when you look at one of the storylines coming into this ball game, Florida State hasn't run the ball that well. 17 rushes, 53 yards, but it's worked out so far on the offensive side for them, right? It has, and it's not the amount of yards that they're getting at the beginning of the game. Those two and three yard runs are going to turn to 10 yard runs and 15 yard runs later in this game as attrition sets in. They've been running the ball really well coming in. That pass incomplete. And also those runs have done an amazing job of opening up their passing game, right? You saw that 75 yard right. touchdown pass. That's because these guys have eight, nine guys hovering within 10 yards of the box because they know, hey, we got to stomp out the run to win this game. Gotcha. And then boom, there goes a big play. Second down and 10. Seminoles with that rushing attack led by Corbin and Ward over the last several games. Somewhat muted right now. As my partner said, maybe not for long. That's Corbin in motion into the backfield where he sets. Takes the handoff, little counter, nothing doing. Blown up on the front line. Q Clemson's defense doing a nice job up front. Yeah, that was much better. Uh, Coach Sweeney told me his biggest concern in the second half was communicating on defense and getting lined up versus the motion. A couple times in this game, Florida State, they've changed formations. Clemson's defense has been late. They haven't gotten the right numbers. They haven't been in the right spot. Right spot. Those are some simple fixes for Brent Venables and this very good defense. Well, we saw Coach Sweeney on the sideline speaking with some of the perpetrators of those offsides penalties for them they had in the first half. He's really tuned into this one. Travis back to pass. Nowhere to go. Staying alive and then some puts his hat down burrowing forward about a yard shy though of that first down near midfield fourth and about one Miles Murphy with good pressure for Clemson. Tough to outrun the speed of that defense for long, Robert. Yeah, Jordan Travis is back there playing backyard football. I'm going to go to the right. I'm going to go to the left. And he's just showing you just how athletic he is. It's unfair. He's the fastest guy on the field right now. They're going to go and for they're it. They're going for it on fourth. Down. You've got to love this. A defining moment for the Seminoles. They pulled him offside four times today. Why not try here? Maybe they're going to run a play. Travis hands it off and they're not going to make it. Corbin stopped. Miles Murphy there to make the first hit. And the defense answers the call. Clemson takes over on downs in great starting field position for their first drive of the second half. Trent Simpson was also in on the play. Yeah, right here you just see Miles Murphy and Trent Simpson. They set the point of attack. They shed the blocks and they make the tackle on Jay Sean Corbin and mm, right there that Florida State fan. Mm, he don't like it. He does not like that. I actually love the call by Novell to go for it on fourth down. Why trust your guys. OK you're at the middle of the field. Your offense has been playing well. Go for it. Why not. They didn't execute well enough to get the first down. Ball start. That's the name of the game. Offense number one. Five yard penalty. It's still first down. That penalty against Shipley. In motion. So they'll move it back five yards. To be first and 15. Man, Clemson's. They've had a collection of those today. Yeah, Clemson's had a lot of premature mutilations today. You know what I mean? It's kind of crazy. From the 46. <laughs> DJ pulls it out, fires a dart on the post. Little skinny post and got it with the catch. And a first down, Tigers. Uyunglele slings it for 29. Mm. Is it me or did DJ just throw one on the money in stride to his wide receiver, Joseph Ngata? Right? RPO, get the safety to come down, deliver it, let him run with it. Mm. That was nice right there. Davis Allen in motion. DJ hands it off to Shipley. And Chipley's tripped up, falls forward to about the 24 by Kalen Deloach, a gain of one on the play. If Florida State's defense could just 
eliminate some of these big chunk plays that they're giving up to Clemson's offense, they're actually playing really well. Right. Like I said, the defensive line is creating havoc at the line of scrimmage. They're shutting down a lot of these runs. Just got to put it all together on one drive and get, give themselves a chance to win today. It's a pretty significant if, though. Shipley motions out of the backfield, makes the catch. Is rocked at about the 20-yard line. Lundy in on the tackle along with Knowles. And about four on the play. Third down coming up for the Tigers, who took over right near midfield on downs. After the Seminoles were unable to pick up the fourth down, the nose of the ball resting on the 20. Shipley in the backfield. Uyungalale in the shotgun. Mm. That's Wass at the bottom of the screen. DJ looks his way up for grabs, incomplete. Tried to find Justin Ross, but ran out of real estate in the back of the end zone. Good pressure by Akeem Dent, who was right in his grill. And his fourth down coming up, and in comes the field goal unit led by BT Potter, who's done two for, well, pardon me, one for two today. Made one from 47, missed from 49. This will be from 37 yards out. Out on the season is 8 for 10. And boy, he's going to miss this one. Pushed it to the right. Wow. And what would seemingly be a pretty routine. First and 10 for the Seminoles from their own 20 yard line after the missed field goal attempt by the Tigers. Treshawn Ward in the backfield. Behind said, quarterback Jordan Travis. You said BT Potter one for three on field goals. Yeah. Clemson's just leaving points on the board right now. Travis completes it over the middle to his tight end. That's Kentron Porter. Portier. Picks up five on the play. Florida State's doing a nice job of just mixing in the passing concept with the run game and you see Jordan Travis's confidence you remember when we watched him play a few weeks ago his confidence throwing the ball and operating this offense is through the roof coaches talk about that North Carolina game that they won he got to his third progression on a critical series and that was kind of a tipping point for him showed his growth Goes underneath to pick up the first down to Williamson. And talk about that, Robert, in terms of the subtleties of a quarterback's development, getting that deep into your progression. is How hard is that over, over the course? Yeah, quarter, playing quarterback is one of the hardest positions in all of football, if not the hardest position. What it's showing you is that he's getting more comfortable because he's playing more. He's getting more comfortable because he's having success. So now he's not worried about the rush or other things, but he can get through his progression smoothly, as you just saw him do right there. Travis. Tell you what, those Clemson guys can run too. On defense. <laughs> yeah, he could run on that one for sure. Hey, we we're talking about inspirational stories earlier when we mentioned Justin Ross and his spinal surgery. What about this guy, Mackenzie Milton? Came back from that cataclysmic, catastrophic knee injury in which he almost had to have his leg amputated. He said. He wanted to see those young quarterbacks get in there in their opportunity. McKenzie's ready. He's done a great job in his preparation. He deferred to the younger quarterback a couple of weeks ago when it was his time to come in. Yeah, it was last week when they were playing the Minutemen, UMass. And uh, Brock Purdy's little brother, Trevor Purdy, came yeah. went in there and played well. Tofili brought down for a gain of about two just to see Mackenzie Milton back on the sidelines and able to play football is, is something that really keeps everything else in its proper perspective. Spent yeah. two years away, more than two years away from the game doing arduous rehabilitation on that leg. Yeah, and you see right here, he's, this is a guy that was in the running for the Heisman. He is the Alex Smith of college football, and he's been phenomenal for this team in their quarterback room and helping those guys develop. Definitely coaching in his future. Great football IQ. That pass complete over to Keyshawn Helton. And Keyshawn Helton is a guy that 
is symbolic of the progress of the Seminoles' receiving core. Remember, he had a bunch of critical drops earlier in the season. He Not did. anymore. Not anymore. They're catching him. And right there, man, Jordan Travis is continuing to just go back and process and deliver the ball. This is a beautiful sight. And taking a shot downfield. Got a man on the post. And just overshot him. Went right back to Helton and missed him by inches. Mm, man, he'd love to have that one back. Yes, you got to trust the process. And right there, he dropped back to pass, saw that he had a safety and a linebacker on one of their fastest players on the team in Keyshawn Helton, but he did not deliver. He couldn't finish it. But right there, you see him. He knows, man, if I get another opportunity to make one of those, I'm going to hit him in stride. I'm beyond impressed. Yeah. Yes, that was an incompletion, but I've been beyond impressed today with Jordan Travis and just seeing his development throughout the season. Second and ten. The RPO. And Travis wisely throws it a bounds. He tried to throw the ball. Incomplete. Well, tonight over on ACC Network at 7.30 Eastern, they'll cap the day with what should really be a great game. North Carolina State looking to bounce back from last Saturday's loss to Miami when they host dual threat quarterback Malik Cunningham in Louisville. If you don't have ACCN, go to ACC. CCN.com for instant access. That's ACCN.com. And the Miami Hurricanes escaping with a win against Pittsburgh today in a close game. Listen, Kenny Pickett picked apart this Clemson defense last week, right? Did he, he picked it for 519 yards today, and they lost. It's college football for you. Travis brought down on backside pressure, fumbled it. Put it on the ground, but it looks like Florida State retrieved it. But a nice hit by Xavier Thomas from behind. He punched it loose. Look at this. Jordan Travis doing what Jordan Travis does, breaks the pocket. But Xavier Thomas, with a phenomenal pursuit angle, comes from behind and knocks the ball out. Mm, with the punch. What a peanut punch. Look at him. Peanut punch? Peanut punch, man. Hey, Charles Tillman, listen. <laughs> Charles yeah. Tillman, Coppers Cove, Texas. Okay. Stand up, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Fourth and 12, and in comes Mastromano again. You know I'm writing these down, right? <laughs> <laughs> Mastromano with an end-over-end -end punt. Comes down to the 16-yard line to Will Brown. It'll be first and 10 from there. Kesnick. Down to the sidelines on the eve of Halloween. I don't know about giving this Robert Griffin the third. <laughs> You're going to go out. DJ with the pass. Shipley out of the backfield. Incomplete at the 35. Amani Gainer. Amari Gainer, pardon me, breaking that up. Sets up a second down and 10. Man, Amari Gainer's been all over the field. Making tackles in the backfield, obviously covering right there, which, you know, they got in a little bit of trouble last week getting their linebackers in coverage, but right. nice job there just playing the receiver's hands in his eyes. Second and 10, Moffa in the backfield. He takes the handoff, nowhere to go for him. Meant immediately at the 10 yard line, the Seminoles' defense led by Fuller. And it'll be third down and long on the loss of four. Poishon Fuller played that to perfection. Man, set the edge, exploded vertically, got the tackle on Phil Moffa, and we know he's a bad Moffa, right? You know? <laughs> so, I mean, you just can't speak enough about, I told you this earlier on the previous drive, this Florida State defense is playing well. Yeah, they got 17 points put on them, but they're keeping their team in the game as their offense is still trying to find their way in the second half. This would be a nice stop for the Seminoles defensively if they can get off the field. DJ back to pass into coverage and picked off at the 40. They were right there sitting on that and they come up with the turnover. Man. Amari Cooper, Amari and Cooper with the INT. And the defense does get off the field with the football. That's her seventh interception of the season. You see it right here. DJ is going to go with the play action pass. And then right here, he's looking. He's right here and he's trying to look. 
He's looking literally where he's trying to throw the ball. The safety goes there, but if you pause the screen here, look at my guy right here, Justin Ross. One on one, has the defender beat, and DJ, he throws it into double coverage. Under throws it and throws it into double coverage. Those are the plays we were talking about he just can't have. We got flags down to the field on first and ten for Jordan Travis. False start. Offense number 58. Five yard penalty. It's still first down. It's Devontae Love Taylor. You know, when the coaching staff, especially Kenny Dillingham, the offensive coordinator for Florida State, talks about Jordan Travis and speaks of him in an effusive praise when he says he can be elite. He can be very special in the last three games. We've seen some of that brilliance. First and 15. Hands it off. And Corbin with nowhere to go might have picked up two. Skalski there to make the tackle on the play. There's college football coming up. Great menu of games. Which one of those intrigues you uh, the most there, Robert? Which one? I mean, Jumps off the come on, it's Ole Miss Auburn, right? You okay. got the Heisman candidate, Matt Corral, trying to stay in the Reagan and actually get his team in position to possibly make the college football playoff. And then right here, number 19, SMU going against Houston. Tanner Mordecai has literally been tearing it up the entire season. Second and 13, underneath the pass complete at the 37-yard line. That's Jordan Wilson on the catch. So it'll be third down and about six to go. And just to get back to talking about Jordan Travis and his development, you know, for the majority of his college career, everyone has doubted him and his ability to throw the ball. But on, he's doing it and showing it on display right now against this Clemson defense that not only can he drop back and throw it, not only can he run around and make those different plays, but he can keep his poise in a tough game in a tough environment. Third and six. Has time. But a move on one defender couldn't escape the second one and he's brought down at the 36 yard line short of the first down would make it a 53 yard field goal if they want to attempt it from there and this is where that extra point that they missed earlier looms a little bit larger than it did earlier in this game. Yeah, it does. Obviously, go for it. if they would have made that extra point, right, they could yeah. possibly take a field goal. But 53 is long. I love the fact that they're opening up and allowing him to see the field and possibly make a play with his legs or his arms. Uh, Fitzgerald actually does have a long of 53, but they're going for it. And there's a flag down. A popular refrain on the afternoon. Prior to the snap, false start. Offense number 75. Five yard penalty. It's still fourth down. That's Dylan Gibbons. And the Seminoles implode. Yeah. Now they don't have a choice. Yeah. Right? Moves the ball all the way back to the 42 yard line. And just when they were getting right, quote unquote, when it comes to fixing some of those penalty issues, they hurt themselves with a big one there. Yeah, they do. Now you just got to make sure your punter here, Master Mono, can. Possibly pin him inside the ten, inside the five, right? One of those uh, Australian punters in that kicking institute that they have down under. Points the nose of the football down, gets it to go end over end, and this is a fantastically placed punt with precision inside the five at about the three yard line. Did exactly what was asked of him. 38 yards in all. First and 10 coming back the other. See how DJ responds after throwing that interception on the last series. Mafa over the left side picks up the first down. There's some determined running. Picks up six and moves the chains. Well, Taco Bell welcomes you to live to the Live Moss student section of the year contest. Uh, use hashtag student section sauce. To get the committee's attention and go to ESPN.com slash Taco Bell. See how your school can compete. DJ back to pass. There's a flag down. DJ down at the 14. Here Thomas there to make the tackle on the play. Let's 
was going to say, maybe some of those uh, students in the student section are signing that book. <laughs> no. Holding. Offense number 84. Penalty is declined. Second down. Okay. Second down coming up for Clemson. That tackle was made on DJ. We saw DJ down in the field before the game. He is a bigger young man than most people would think. 6'4, 250, stout, strong. I mean, look at those thighs. Yeah. Thunder thighs. <laughs> That's a big man. Every day's a leg day. Oh, for sure. He's going to run it himself. Puts his hat down and is stopped up at about the 17. Got three on the play. So, third down coming up. Man, Florida, Seminoles say, defense has done well on third down last couple few times. They have. They're getting Clemson off the field. And if you just watch that last play, just look at how many guys were around the ball. This Florida State defense is playing with extreme effort and tenacity, and they seem like they're having fun out there, right? Yeah. This defense is flying around on the ball, and it's making everything DJ is trying to do different. Third and nine. Quick three-step drop. DJ fires a dart complete to who else? Mr. Dependable Justin Ross. Count on him to move the chains. First down on the 12-yard pickup. They're going a little bit faster here up at the line of scrimmage from the 30-yard line. That completion was exactly what the doctor ordered. When you come back from a, an interception on the previous drive, a turnover, getting first downs, making throws, paramount for your offense to get back in sync. Under a minute to go in the third. Nowhere to go for Mafa. Deloach making the tackle. You know, Brent Venables, the defensive coordinator, was out in California recruiting a linebacker at DJ's school, John Bosco, a popular football school, when someone gave him a call and said, hey, you need to check out the quarterback there. He did, and the rest is history. DJ was actually sold initially on Alabama, but decided to take his last few visits to Clemson and Georgia and ultimately signed with the Tigers. They set up the screen into the boundary and uh, good balance by Davis Allen brought down by Dent with 13 seconds to go and mm. he had a whole lunge right there after that hit yeah. didn't he. Well designed play picked up six. That's going to be the final play of the third quarter. Clemson trying to make it 32 consecutive wins here in Death Valley. That's the end of the first 45 minutes. The Seminoles trying to look for their fourth straight win. Can they snap their five game losing streak to Clemson? They'll need some more miraculous plays like that. Fourth quarter coming up on the other side of this. College football delivered by Papa John's. Third down and six for DJ. Fires complete for the first down. Justin Ross, his safety blanket, working against Jarvis Brownlee for the reception. And they're going quick. Back up to the line of scrimmage at a 41, a 25 yard pickup. It was almost like DJ Uyunglele airdropped that one to Justin Ross. They were on the same page, and we haven't seen that from them all year. Hands it off to Shipley, and Shipley picks up a long two. Here, Thomas making the tackle on the play. Second down and about eight. I like the way that Will Shipley has run the football today and caught the football. Obviously, not at 100% after just recently coming back from an injury. But 14 rushes for 81 yards and a touchdown today for the true freshman out of Weddington, North Carolina, a suburb of Charlotte. Five star tailback. He tried to set up the screen. It's caught by Williams, but he's brought down. Ball loose. They're fighting for it. It came out before he hit the ground. And the Seminoles have it. Gaynor comes out of the pack of humanity with the football. Mama, there goes that man. How about it? Amari Gaynor. 
We talked about it. He's been all over the field, making plays, tackles in the backfield, coverage. And what does he do now? Comes up with a big fumble recovery for his Florida State the Seminoles. The field of a fumble recovered by the defense is under further review. And it's ripped out by yeah. Jamie Robinson. You know, we talked with, with Tony Elliott this week, and he said that Jamie Robinson is one of the guys that does not get talked about enough. He's been playing at a very high level. about it now aren't they only cost him a few seconds as he deflated Mike Norvell on the sidelines it's a big opportunity there for Florida State and they fumbled it away right back to Clemson. Young away hands it off to Shipley between the tackles a nice burst up the middle down to the 37 yard line Jamie Robinson who caused the previous turnover making the tackle yeah you see it here Treshawn Ward just going to the ground and just his wrist. Wrist hits the ground, causes a fumble. Man, can the wrist cause a fumble? Yes, it can. Yes, right? it can. The wrist can cause a fumble. Ground can't, but the wrist can. <laughs> Nine yard gain. Second and one. DJ hands it off again. Well, Shipley gets downhill real quickly, doesn't he? Hard running. Averaging almost five yards a carry on the season. Talked about the praise that he earned from McCaffrey. Man, Will Shipley. He's been showing out today and they've been using him a lot. He's going to need a nice ice cold bath tonight after all these hits he's taken. I need four total yards on the ground for him. First and ten. Williams in motion to hand it off again. This time, DJ Lundy, the other DJ on the other side of the football, making a nice play for that Seminoles defense. DJ Lundy on the ones and twos. Man. Just on the way here in the fourth and final quarter. Does it feel like Clemson's offense is getting just a, a little conservative? Maybe they're content and run the mm. clock out. No. Oh. Second and nine. Uyunglele, that was coming in a little bit hot, incomplete for Ujo. Working against Jarvis Brownlee, and it'll be third down and nine. Didn't look like yeah. Joe didn't get his head turned around in time. Yeah, I was going to say, it looked like a Joe Joe was hitting himself in the helmet because he knew he should have made that catch. Third and nine. Yeah, Big right. down. That's it. It's third and nine. If you don't get this first down, do you, do you entertain going for it on fourth? Number 32, DJ got one on one coverage, incomplete, and a flag thrown at the seven. Multiple. Jerry and Jones, the best cover corner for the Seminoles, working against uh, Bo Collins. Defense. Number seven. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. I was gonna. I was gonna say if they didn't get the first down there, you might want to entertain going for it on fourth the way your kicker is, is playing right now. But Jerry and Jones right here is challenging the wide receiver, and I don't necessarily agree with the call wow. there. Wow. I don't think there was enough contact. But at the same time, Bo Collins sold it. Listen, he's taking his acting classes, people. <laughs> All right, Jerry and Jones has been playing really well over the past couple of weeks. I thought he played the ball well there. He yep. played the receiver, didn't prevent him from getting to the ball. But listen, we're in Death Valley. The ref was a little, little generous with the flag there. I would agree. That guy right there made the game-changing play against North Carolina a couple of weeks ago. On the reverse, it's fumbled and picked up by Florida State. They get it right back. Jared J. 
Jackson off the fumble from Williams. Oh, they're going to say incomplete pass. Behind the line of scrimmage. It's second down. Second down coming up. Yeah, because that was forward. It's not a fumble. Okay. So they get saved there. You know, teams use this type of play to sneak in a completion to the receiver and, and a completion for the quarterback. So because it was forward. Yeah, behind the line of scrimmage. And it's behind yep. the line of scrimmage. Incomplete pass. I know DJ's got to be thinking, oh, my Lord, yeah. not again. Used to seeing the ball on the ground a lot in the last couple of moments. First and 10 from the 17. Shipley with more hard running. Inside the 15, picked up about four. I want to mention again that that offensive line of the Tigers decimated by injury. They lost Matt Brockhorst a little bit earlier this year. Actually, it was last week. Season ending knee injury. So third and six coming up. What do you like here, Robert, if you're Clemson? Yeah, I like that. I would I wish they would go empty here. It looks like they're not going to, but I'm either trying to run the quarterback or target Justin Ross in the passing game. DJ rolls out. Nowhere to throw it. And he throws it away wisely. Deep into the tunnel. It looked like Shipley was one of the intended receivers, so the Seminoles defense puts it on the place kicker who hasn't responded today, frankly. For Coach Swinney, BT Potter, just one of three. He's made one from 47, but misfired from 49 and 37. This one will come from 30. That was low, and he missed it again. He's one for four. And the Seminoles dodge one to the disbelief of everybody in attendance here wearing Clemson orange. Dabo Sweeney right now probably feeling busted, disgusted, and not to be trusted. It's, it's bacon mania at Papa John's with the new triple bacon pizza. Order today and in part by Duluth Trading Company. Clothing and gear designed and tested to do. You'd have to go back to 2010. Michael Dyer of Auburn with a play similar to that one you saw on your screen a moment ago right there appeared to be down in the national title game. And he went on to run in for a touchdown. Travis fires complete out to the 44 yard line to Jordan Wilson and a nice first down and execution on the 24 yard game. Just another just another special play right there by Jordan Travis throwing it to Jordan Wilson. He's getting hit in the process rolling to his right makes a beautiful throw. It's going to take more of those type of plays for Florida State to come back and win this game. They go empty five wide receivers. Travis with the pump fake. And Clemson didn't go for the pump fake. As Travis picks up two yards, Xavier Thomas forcing him out of bounds. Second down and eight coming up. You know, Jordan Travis has thrown the ball to eight different receivers today. And none of them have more than two receptions. But it just shows you how he's processing right now, going through the offense, spreading this team out, this defense out, and giving him avenues to run in is really important and really good. With 10 minutes left in the fourth, you're going to have to ask your special players to make big time plays in a big time game. They're going to run it this time. This is Toa Feely, and he picks up two, so it'll be third down coming up. And it's interesting when speaking with Mike Norvell, he said, this game is going to be about which team will get up the most after being hit. An endurance contest, essentially. Yeah, it's an endurance contest, and these teams do have beef. They don't like each other. This is a grudge match. It's a rivalry. It's third and five right now. Who's going to step up and make that play for Florida State to stay on the field? Empty formation again. Travis incomplete. Behind his intended receiver, Helton. And 
Clemson's defense will get off the field on fourth down coming up here. Threw it a little bit behind them. He knew who he wanted to throw it to. Keyshawn Hilton was open. He ran a nice little concept there to get him open there on the curl. Just a little behind him. Yeah, Helton had been playing well coming into this ball game too, but that was an extremely difficult catch to make for him. That wasn't an HBO. Help a brother. That, that wasn't a help a brother out. <laughs> Got to give him a better ball there. There's a look at Will Brown back for this punt, standing on his own 10-yard line. Ask Romano on his own 35. You got a flag. Delay game. Offense. Five yard penalty. It's still fourth down. Master Mano, remember, had that wonderful punt last quarter when he was able to land it inside the five yard line. Former Aussie rules kicker. Clint was telling us about how. He was down in Australia and saw the accuracy in which Australian kickers can kick that football. Fair catch at the 13 yard line by Will Brown. First and 10 from there. DJ back on the field when we return to Memorial Stadium. Matt Barry in our college football studios with an update. Caleb Williams continues to be brilliant. This is his sixth touchdown pass of the day. His sixth. And there's still 11 minutes to play in the fourth quarter. It is all OU. And Oregon is starting to find their stride. Anthony Brown to Devin Williams for the touchdown. Oregon up 45 14. First down and 10 for the Tigers here. DJ gets it out quickly, complete to his wide receiver, Bo Collins, the true freshman from Los Angeles, California. Collins, a former. High school teammate with DJ from the west side. Yeah, they were teammates for two years together out there. Under nine minutes to go here in the football game. Gain of nine. Second and one. Shipley, they're going to ride him, and he's not going to pick up the first down. Fabian Lovett with the tackle. Well, our big lineup continues tonight. Saturday Night Football ABC number 20 Penn State against number five Ohio State Monday Night Football week eight has the Giants in Kansas City and that's on uh, ESPN with Peyton and Eli on ESPN 2 everything also available on ESPN it's app one app one tap third down and one do I sense a run coming on third and one maybe Shipley and, uh, speaking, oh. of, speaking of Manning this is a Big uh, recruiting weekend. Ball start. Offense for number Clemson. 74. Five yard penalty. It's still third down. Five star quarterback Arch Manning is in attendance along with a bunch of other prospects. Five star prospect from uh, Louisiana. There he is talking to Dabo Sweeney, right? The man who's counted to infinity twice. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing that he can't do to Clemson fans, right? Third down and six. Not to mention Nathan Joseph out of Edison High School. Fumble! It comes loose. Scoop! Score! Seminole strike! Wow! A cataclysmic event as Clemson loses the ball. There's a flag down, but Jermaine Johnson was the one that knocked it loose and picked it up. And Jermaine Johnson said, arch this, man. Here we go. <laughs> wow. The penalty might be unsportsmanlike because of celebration. We'll see. Wow. A look of disbelief on the faces of people here at Memorial Stadium. <laughs> the stadium is quiet. And his face too has it. And the, the band is over there doing the, the war chump. Look at this, man. Jermaine Johnson, a top 10 pick, said, hey man, say less, I'll make the Third play. Fouls by each team holding num offense, number 74. Penalty is declined. The result of the play is a fumble recovered by the defense for a touchdown. Oh, Jermaine. After the play, Unsportsmanlike conduct. Fumbling uh, recovering team. 
That's his first of his game. Okay. That 15 yard penalty will be enforced at the seceding spot. This is the second week in a row that I've seen a call like the Iowa State game that I don't. I'm wondering about the unsportsmanlike call there. The but 15 yard penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. He the, has the to result. Be, yeah, he has to be calling that because Jermaine Johnson threw the ball back into the field of play wow. in celebration. Is that what we're talking about? Hey, man. Wow. Let, let the okay. kids have a little fun, right? Okay. 739 to go. The Seminoles score on the peel by Jermaine Johnson. Picked his pocket. Took his cornbread and ran it into the end zone on his own. Yes, Watch he did. This. Jermaine Johnson said, offense, you're struggling a little bit. Say less, baby. I'll make the play. Touchdown, Seminole. This is ESPN College Football delivered by Papa John's. You're watching the ACC on ESPN. Folks, here's what's at stake. Florida State, the resurrection continues here this afternoon. They've won three in a row. Trying to make it four. Meanwhile, Clemson trying to keep its 31 game home winning streak alive. Shipley on the return, all the way out to the 38 yard line. Well, it's almost time for the first college football playoff rankings released Tuesday, November 2nd on ESPN. We have the college football playoff top 25 show presented by Allstate as we get ready for the release. Robert, what are your predictions? For the rankings. Yeah, these would these be my this would be my my guy my teams that are in there. Georgia one, Ohio State two, Cincinnati three, Oklahoma four. Good chance that all these teams could be conference champions, right? Michigan State beat Michigan today. Alabama's sitting there at five. I know some people might be upset about that, mm -hmm. but listen, they got to go through Georgia Georgia to get there, and I'm not sure two SEC schools should be in there if these other conference champions only have one loss. First and ten. DJ hands it off to Shipley. And fans, don't forget to go to ESPN.com slash Allstate Playoff Predictor to check out your team's chances to make the college football playoff. Robert, you and I talked about this at nauseum. We're, we're gonna have we're going, we're going to fight over Cincinnati in one way or another, right? There's going to be a fight because I'm telling you, their, their, their resume is not going to be good enough to have them be number two on that ranking. They should be in the top three. To see what happens with that group of five leader Shipley wrestled to the ground, slammed to the ground by Fabian Lovett. So it's going to be third and long. And I just want to go back real quick. I, I still don't, you know, I'm not crazy about that celebration or unsportsmanlike rule. Going back to that game with Iowa State last week, with that what's what was a call that I thought was terrible. It's almost as if officials are looking for it now. Yeah, they are looking for don't these know taunting why. calls. They're trying to maybe trying to take the fun out of the game a little bit, but right there, just let them have fun, yeah. man. Back here, DJ under duress, sacked. Back at the 33, the Seminoles dial up a little bit of heat. Keir Thomas, the first to get there. Malcolm Ray finished it off, and it's fourth down. That's their third sack, Robert. Wow, oh wow. Talked about this Florida State defensive line in the beginning, but watch how these guys decide how to meet at the quarterback. Little twist game. Hello, sir. How you doing? Here's a little bit of pain for you, DJ. We're not playing no more music the rest of the night. Florida State's defensive line has been playing really well today. They're playing with energy. They're getting those taunts off. You're in the play now. <laughs> Could be, could be the start of something different for Florida State. They have the lead, 20 to 17, with 5:36 to go. Trying to stretch their winning streak to four. It's statement Saturday, and our Saturday night football matchup presented by Capital One is another Big Ten battle. Number 20 Penn State in Columbus taking on number five Ohio State at the Shoe. 7:30 Eastern, 4:30 Pacific on ABC and the ESPN app. One app, one tap. Robert, what are the Seminoles' best chances and maybe their best opportunity to close this game out and put it on ice? First, it starts with them getting the first first down, right? Because that's going to take more time off the clock, and then they can possibly put the dagger in them with a big play down the field. It's a big drive right here for both teams. Jordan Travis, first and 10 from the 19, and wow. 
Ball start. Offense. Not the way you want to start it. Five yard penalty. It's no first down. That's their seventh penalty. Let's take a look at today's game track delivered by Papa John. Some of the cogent and pertinent numbers on the afternoon. Yeah, that Florida State defense, you know, three turnovers forced. They're looking like the Florida State defense of old. Coming out here, like you said, they're resurrecting themselves. They're playing with Uncle Mo on their side. First and 15. Travis keeps it himself, and he got rocked. Wow, Goodrich with a good hit. Gain of one. Boy, he wanted all the smoke on that one. He wanted all the smoke. Oh, my Lord. Mario Goodrich coming up, letting Jordan Travis know this ain't no picnic. You better bring your shoulder pads with you. Ah! No man wins. Second and 14. This defense third in the nation in scoring defense, allowing just over 14 points per game. Corbin in the backfield. Travis on the move and brought down from behind and he rolls forward to about the 19. Thomas made the tackle. It's going to be a couple yard gain on the play. Sets up a third down. Man, I know I know Clemson's defensive line has to think that chasing George seconds. Travis around all, all day today has been like trying to catch a rabbit. Please like Xavier game, Thomas, Fox, man. Four minutes, you just keep seconds. going. Keep going. Four, keep giving nine. the effort. Keep giving the effort. And eventually you're going to get there. And right there he did. Thank you. It's third and 12. This is exactly where Florida State doesn't want to be and exactly where Clemson needs them to be at this point in the game. Four minutes in the, into it. Make Jordan Travis beat you with his arm. I think he can, but yeah. he's got to show it. Big play coming up here. And now let's take a look at today's hardest working player brought to you by Duluth Trading Company. And it's the true freshman, Shipley. A career high on the ground, doing a great job catching the football out of the backfield. Bouncing back, showing a lot of resilience in the wake of an injury several weeks ago. You can't say enough about the courage and the temerity that he's shown this afternoon. But will he get another shot on the field? Third and 12. Empty formation. Five receivers. Travis going to take off and they'll have to punt. Fourth down coming up. Tyler Davis making the tackle. And in comes Alex Mastromano with maybe his biggest punt of the game coming up. Maybe his biggest punt of the season. Yeah, Kenny, to this point. I was going to say, Kenny Dinlingham and, and Brent Venables are out there playing chestnut checkers. They go spread, open it up, give Jordan Travis an opportunity to use his legs if he needs to. Venables drops everybody into coverage and, and has the rush contain Jordan Travis, knowing that if they do that, he's going to try to sprint up the field. This is high level football going on out there right now. Will Brown back there for the punt. Master Mono, an end over end punt, comes down at the 42 yard line. That's going to be pretty good starting field position for DJ Ui Alongalale. 38 yard punt. They've relied heavily on Will Shipley carrying the football this afternoon, Robert. They have. When we, when we talked to Dabo. He's going to get his number called here a lot oh, on this drive? 100% he's going to yeah. get his number called. He's been the driving force for their offense the entire day. And DJ is going to have to make a couple throws to put them in the position to either tie this game or win it. But if it's me, I'm not putting it in the hands of the kicker. You got to go down and score a touchdown, be the quarterback that everybody knows or thought you would be. DJ pulls it out on the RPO, taking a shot one on one, got a man. Incomplete, broken up with a flag. Knowles back there against Collins. Bo Collins knocked it away, but there was a flag thrown. Man, I, I know they're going to throw that flag for defensive pass interference, but that's just another iffy call there on Knowles, man. He's playing the receiver. Pass interference. Defense, number 26. 15-yard wow. penalty. 
This is automatic a, first down. In the NFL, this is a very common call, right? They call it face guarding. As a DB, you can't face guard the receiver when he's trying to go make a play. But right here, what is he doing to impede Bo Collins from making this catch? Being in good coverage? Be, be, being, in, being in good position? The is, only thing that I would tell him is to turn and look for the ball so that the ref doesn't have an excuse right. or reason to throw that flag. Gives him a first and 10 from the 43. DJ on a predetermined quarterback run. And they're going to chop him down after a one yard gain. Good tackle on the corner from Akeem Dent. Came up from his safety spot and brought some boom on that one. Second down coming up. Under three and a half to play. Clemson with two timeouts remaining. Florida State with its full complement of three. But keep in mind, as my partner said a moment ago, BT Potter is one for four on field goals today. DJ going to tuck it under and run. And that might be Bowder line late hit. It was. Lundy came a little bit late. And that is a costly flag for Florida State. Man, we got a little DJ on DJ crime right there, man. Wow. DJ Lundy with the late hit. After the play, personal foul, late hit, defense number four. 15 yard penalty will be added to the end of the play. Automatic first down. Look, look at this though. He gets him hit late, and DJ's on the sideline acting it out, man. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it was for real. Yeah. But listen, that's two 15 yard penalties this drive. Pass interference, late hit out of bounds. If you're a Florida State fan, you got to be saying to yourself, why? Why make those mistakes now? This would have seemed like they'd gotten out of the penalty business. Two costly ones. 3 0 1 to go. First and 10 from the 21. Shipley. Nice cut, two of them. Put the defender on skates for the touchdown. That's not a freshman. And Shipley's just carrying guys to the end zone. And believe it or not, guys, Clemson has scored more than 21 points against an FBS opponent. An offense that came into the game averaging right around 20 a game. Of a touchdown is under further review. We're going to see if maybe his knee hit prior to breaking the plane of the end zone. But regardless, what an invariable effort by Will Shipley here. Uh, Will Shipley just willing himself to get to the end zone. He would not be denied. Look, his knee comes down there right at the very end, but the ball has already broken the plane. That's a touchdown. Man, Will Shipley was looking like a... Let's take a look at his knee here, Robert. Yeah. See if it touched prior to... There it is. Ball's past the... The, yeah, the ball in. is past the plane. He's right in. Right there. That is a touchdown. You show it again, boom. Knee down. Ball is past the plane. The ruling on the field is a touchdown. And remember, there has to be indisputable video evidence to overturn the call on the field. You know, as I'm watching that run, it just reminds me of sometimes when you're in the airport, you see that family, they're about to miss their flight. They will not be stopped. Yeah. That was Will Shipley just then. Yeah. Here he is, boom, you see it again. Knee comes down. Here's the ball. Here's the call. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. Hey. Like we said, ball was already past the plane. Good job on the ref and everybody reviewing the play like they always have to. But wow. Did you see how this stadium came alive? Yeah. I'll tell you what, those two costly penalties aided Clemson on that drive. This is the most points they've scored against an FBS opponent in the in this season. This, is almost, a, this is almost an offensive explosion yep. for Clemson today. Tony Elliott even said it hasn't been this way since 2010, but the coaching staff working through it. 
that guy has been the hub of everything good today for them offensively. Will Shipley has been a star for the Tigers. And you know what? That offensive line has done a nice job in spite of the fact that they lost their leader up front, Matt Brockhurst. 22 rushes for Shipley, 124 yards, a career high, and a couple of touchdowns, which also ties a career high. Brockhurst right there on crutches. Lost him last week, a season ending injury. And a win like this can do a lot of good things besides putting you in a good place to still win the division mathematically for Clemson and recruiting as well. We mentioned it's a big recruiting white weekend for Clemson. Talked about Arch Manning and Nathan Joseph, a five star out of Edison High School in Miami, Florida, also here. And they're going to try and return this. Ward out to the 26. Let's go back to the studio. All right, guys, Oklahoma took out Caleb Williams. It was a blowout. Spencer Rattler back in. What does he do? First and 16. Chucks a touchdown. 52 14. It is all boomer. And coming up after your guys' game, Bo Nix. Sam Acha told me last night, watch out, they're wearing orange face masks. There they are. They've got Ole Miss coming up 20 minutes here on ESPN. Tell you what, Dabo Swing wears a lot of hats here. Right now, he's got the cheerleading mode all clicked in. <laughs> Tell the fans to make some noise. He really doesn't. Florida State first and 10 from the 25. Jordan Travis did it several weeks ago. The pass complete at the 31 to Jordan Wilson. Remember the two minute drill several weeks ago at home against Syracuse. Led his team down the field into field goal range for the game winning field goal. Can he duplicate that? Kenny Dillingham said that gave him a lot of confidence. Can he do it again? Travis hands it off. This is Torfili, and he picks up a first down near the 40. We talked about Clemson riding Will Shipley. Well, for Florida State, you have to ride Jordan Travis. You see a play like that where he just hands the ball off, but he's still a threat, and he's opening up holes for everybody else. But he's got to play his best football right here in the last two minutes of the game. Oh, Travis put a good move on the defender. Tried to thread it in there. Incomplete, though. Lives to play another play. Under two minutes to go now. Florida State with its full complement of timeouts remaining. They've got three. Clemson with two. Looking to keep their three-game winning streak alive and extended. It was with his legs that Travis made those big plays with the two-minute drill in that Syracuse win several weeks ago. But and this is a different defense. But they're going to give him an opportunity to do both, use his legs and his arms by going spread right here, empty formation. Couldn't get away, brought down at the 37. And it's third down coming up, Miles Murphy with the sack. And the Seminoles are going to burn one of their two timeouts. And we've been calling this man's name all night. Xavier Thomas, number three. He's the reason that Jordan Travis had to step up. And Miles Murphy, number 98, was right there to get the sack from behind. They are collapsing the pocket and keeping Jordan Travis contained right now. They have to figure out a way to get Jordan Travis loose if you're Florida State. Third sack of the night. This is the type of game that as we reflect on the greatness of college football that the Bowdens would love. And in tribute to the late Bobby Bowden, the signature dome, the hat that he would always wear on the sidelines. Of course, of course his son coached here for several years in attendance here today. And uh, Bobby Tommy, Bowden, yeah. I was going to say Bobby Bowden's son Tommy gave, uh, Tommy was, yep. he gave Dabo his first opportunity in coaching, you know. Of course, this rivalry goes way back. They played so many memorable 
games between these two schools. This is the 34th edition about to go down as a potential classic as well. Third and 13. Travis staying alive and then falls and slips. Loose ball, but he might have been down first. They're going to say Clemson ball, and that's going to do it. He was not down before he fumbled. Miles Murphy with the recovery. And it's going to be tough now for Florida State. I talked about it earlier in the broadcast, how Clemson was doing a contained rush to make sure they kept Jordan Travis in the pocket. So when you see him break here from Ruka Roro, there's another guy waiting for him over there. He sees him, tries to oh, get out of the play, there? but he might have been down. His knee actually might have been down there. That was close. But Tyler Davis is right there waiting for him because they know in crucial situations, you can't just worry about Jordan Travis's arm. You have to the focus on his legs. Is under further review. They're reviewing the play to see if he was potentially down. His knee was very close to touching there, which yep, he's would down, mandate guys. that he's down. He's down. If we run it back, you see it right there. His knee touch. His knee is down on the ground right there. Wow. What do you know? By rule, with his knee touching the turf, He's down right there. But I love that picture on the sideline a moment ago after what we think is a turnover or thought at the time was a turnover. Mike Norville calmly walked over to jo Jordan Travis, said something to him in a very calm voice, and let him be on his way. Coaching his guy up. Yeah, he coached him up. He wasn't sitting there yelling at the guy. You don't think if Jordan Travis fumbled right there, he knows that he messed up? Yeah. What is screaming at him in that moment going to do for him? That's big on Mike yeah. Norvell. Shows you his character. Got to love him. Got, it shows you his character that in times of adversity, he's not going to lose his cool. He understands that this is bigger than just one game. This is bigger than football. Trying to set his culture, too. It's program he's trying building. Trying to set his at culture the and program review, the, the right quarterback's way. knee was down at the 17 yard line. It's fourth down. So fourth down from the 17. And they've got their punter in there. Yeah, I mean, Alex they, Mastromano. They've got two timeouts. Yep. Maybe they're thinking that their defense can get a couple stops and get them the ball back because the possibility or probability of them making a fourth and 32. It's slim to none. Let's just be honest. Come on. It's how, slim to none. How much better is it than getting the ball back? That's very true That's as well. That's slim too, right? It's very slim. There's Master Mono. I'm sure the analytics tell him to do it. There's a formula or algorithm for it somewhere. And it's going to roll all the way down to the 30 yard line, first and 10, after the 53 yard punt. DJ Uyungalale. Will come back onto the field. His numbers today 19 of 31 for 181, 89 yards, one touchdown, and one interception. What do you make of the body of work today by the quarterback? It's been a mixture, right? Okay. Good and bad. Okay. I would honestly say it's been more bad than good. Really? And, and you don't like that. You don't want to see that from Big Cinco. But at the end of the day, he's been fighting through adversity all year. He hasn't been able to really live up to the expectations, but he's never put his head down and he keeps going and keeps fighting every single day. Shipley picks up about three. Florida State with two timeouts remaining. He's going to say, when you talk about putting the head down, <laughs> Will Shipley keeps putting his yeah. head down and keeps going, keeps going. I know this guy's got to be sore. There's no way that he's completely healthy, but he's given everything he possibly can for his team today. You see him catching balls on screens. You see him making runs and making guys miss, taking the hits and getting back up, catching the ball when it's just a little bit behind him and getting vertical and then going into the end zone, scoring touchdowns. He's carrying people. He's carrying this team right now. And I don't think there's anybody on the field that's more happy for his success and what he's been doing today than DJ Uyunglele.
play yeah. because it's taken pressure off of him, and some of the mistakes that he's made have been overshadowed by the performance of Will Shipley. 23 carries for 127 yards and two touchdowns. Maybe that's part of the big picture plan from here on in for the Clemson Tigers. That did look a little Christian McCaffrey like, yeah, you know, on that last run. It did. It Second did. and seven. Made it for Weddington, North Carolina, just outside Charlotte. Gets the call again here, and he's going to be stopped after a short gain. Florida State with one timeout remaining, and they're going to burn it here. Robert Cooper making the tackle. Well, DJ, if he gets his team to win, really. And the final analysis that all that's all that matters. It, it really is. It really is all that matters. And it's interesting because Dabble's such a prideful guy. Right. Would you would you say? And he's kind of felt disrespected by the criticism of his program, his coaches, his players. And we definitely felt that. That's part of the landscape. It's part of the landscape. And we definitely felt that in our meeting with him this week during the call. But it's hard. Look, it's hard to win games at any level of football, high school, college, or the pros. And when national championship is the expectation, right. when you're four and three, it feels like the sky is falling. Right. And for these faithful here, the Clemson Tiger fans, they don't want their program to go down the same route that other programs that were top programs went over the last couple of years. You look, you look at, you look at Florida State, you look at LSU and some of these programs, but these players are playing their heart out out there, and we see it. That's what it comes down to the players like Will Shipley stopped up at the line of scrimmage. So fourth down coming up. Florida State will get the football back. Question that begs though is how much time will they have to work with here. It won't be a lot. Looks like they're going to have what 34 seconds possibly right around 30. They should have left after it's all said and done in the low 30s. Jordan Travis with one more opportunity to make something magical happen for Florida State. So you're telling me there's a chance? Yes, there's always a chance. From some of the interesting and unique things we've seen today, touchdown-wise, yes. Both Florida State touchdowns that we've seen were pretty unique. Two of them, two out of three. Sorry, timeout. Clemson will burn one of its remaining timeouts as we take a look at the college football lineup tonight. Great menu coming up. Ole Miss Auburn after this one, SMU Houston. Penn State, Ohio State on ABC, UCLA in Salt Lake City, and Virginia BYU, who's back in the top 25 on ESPN2. But you, you had a good uh, comment a moment ago about Clemson and the program, and it's no secret that under Coach Winnie, it's a, a very faith-based program, and part of that faith and belief, there's an element of humility in there. And it's all part of the grand equation. Sometimes whether you like it or not. That's very true. There's been a number of times in my career that someone said <laughs> something about me that I didn't like. And you have to handle it with poise, confidence, and an appreciation of prof professionalism. Fourth and six. And the punt coming from Spires. Clemson, their third and final of the half. It will be 30 seconds. So back for this punt after Coach Swinney gives final instructions is Treshawn Ward who does not have a punt return for a touchdown this year. And they don't have nothing more for him to at least put them in good field position after the punt return. I was going to say what do you think his coach is telling him right there. They've got a plan. Thirty four seconds on the clock. They're going to be real tight on time to try to make yeah. this work. Ward is a great story. Former walk on was just put on scholarship in the spring after really tearing up the first and second string guys on scout team a season ago. Spires a low line drive punt. Gets a fortuitous bounce inside the 10. 
That's about as good as you can draw it up if you're the Tigers, right, Robert? Yes, it is, and it's just another special teams play that just makes you scratch your head for Florida State. Last week they had a kickoff return that they had to fumble the first play of the game, and then they they fair caught two uh, they fair caught two punt returns inside the ten right there. You got to do <laughs> everything you possibly can to get the ball and scoop it and go. Scoop it and go. Yeah. I don't understand what happened right there. But you can't just let it trickle down. Yeah. Now you guys got 23 seconds. 23 seconds to go. 90. What? 91, 91 yards. yards. Man. Yeah. They're going to need another Jordan. one of those Lawrence Toa Philly type plays yeah. to happen for this to, to make it possible for Florida State. Jordan Travis. First down and 10 from his own nine. Can't use up too much clock here. Pass complete at the 33, but using precious time, neither team with a timeout remaining. And we got a flag down. He might have crossed the line of scrimmage. He was dangerously close. Penalties have been the bane of the Seminoles all season, albeit the last three games. They've avoided them. Illegal four pass. Offense from the 13. Going to four pass after crossing the line of scrimmage. Five yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Lost it down. It's second down. Nine penalties for a total of 85 yards. This one costly. Yeah, you see it right here now. Every part of the body of the quarterback review. has to be past the line of scrimmage in order for it to be an illegal four pass. And he is beyond the line of scrimmage every single part even the towel that he's wearing in his back <laughs> is beyond the line of scrimmage there but listen he's trying to make a play but he's got to understand you can't run past the line of scrimmage and make a throw so here now what 13 seconds left they got to have some trick play that they've been working on all year I'm to, guessing uh, to make a play happen here play under review I'm guessing we're going to see a lot of laterals yeah, you see, here's the last one you see him here running getting vertical getting vertical Hmm. That angle maybe not the best yeah, one. That's not the best angle to tell this whether he was better. past the line or this not. This one's more con conclusive. Jordan Travis trying to make something happen. Hmm. hmm. It, it's that's when actually, he releases it. It's actually closer, than, closer it than, it, than you thought. But right here when the ball comes out, if the line of scrimmage is the nine-yard line, it actually might not be an illegal forward pass. Let's see where he lets right go here. of it. Oh, that's tough. Like I say, that towel, that towel might be a saving grace. <laughs> okay. Not gonna lie. <laughs> let me let me here. That bad boy right there. After further review, there is no foul for an illegal forward pass. The result of the play is a first down. There it is. Hey. Please set the game clock to 15 seconds. The clock will start on my signal. Hey, listen, Mark. That's a, that's why so they have stays. replay. Yep. That's why they have replay. We got a closer look at it. You the, can see he wasn't past the line. The play stands first and 10 from the 33. 23 yard gain stands. Travis got to get it off. He does. Bodies downfield and it's knocked down by the Tigers with four seconds to go on the incompletion. Makuba. Broke it up, playing his safety position. Guy that has been in the hip of Nolan Turner, learning the nuances of the defense. Turner, one of the upperclassmen. And McCoba is a true freshman. Yeah. And Venables talked to us about how he doesn't normally like to play those types of guys, those true freshmen in that role. But McCuba has impressed, and he's playing at a very high level. And he's been doing it all year, not just today. This year's a little different for the Tigers. Let's see if Florida State can get a miracle. Four seconds to go. Travis. Little hook and ladder. And here we go. Travis scoops it up. They're still alive. That went backwards, but it's loose on the fumble. Boy, this is going to be interesting if it's a touchdown. It is. That's it. Sometimes it turns out that way. 
Florida State trying to do the hook and ladder. Throw it back across the field. It's a touchdown for the, the Clemson Tigers. The game is not over. The game is not over. The game is not the over. Play is under part of review. That last play under review. The game is not over. Well, nobody else knows that the game hasn't the game is ended. Not over. The play is Someone needs to tell Dabo. They also have a player shaken up on the field at about the eight yard line. Well, all that beef that was between these two teams, they got to grill it up and eat it, huh? Hey, man. <laughs> Will Shipley was the guy that did a lot of the heavy lifting offensively for Clemson. After further review, the defense scored a touchdown. That is the end of the game. Some people are going to be really happy about that touchdown counting. One more look. Time's out. Gordon Travis throws it back. And it's a loose slide ball. It's a ball loose here. slide ball. Barrett Carter picks it up. Touchdown. Guess his knee didn't touch before he got into the end zone. It looked like it touched, but the ball probably had crossed the Don't plane. Don't say that. They may look Play. at it again. Oh, no. <laughs> Not another review. For the Clemson Tigers, 32. Count them. 32 consecutive home wins. And the DJ got to spin a little bit tonight. 24-20 the final, Ole Miss-Auburn coming.